going to be. He gets away from one tackle. Lefty's football. still running. Cuts back up. Lefty's still on his feet. Lefty's still on his feet. He's down the sideline. He's headed for pay dirt. Touchdown, Dragons! Nothing is more important than the love of a family. There to share the good times. There to share the hard times. We are here to serve the family with thoughtful consideration and respect. The love of a family is a very special thing. It never grows old. It just grows. A love that lasts forever. And welcome to the 2019 Homecoming Parade. Uh, joining me, Miss uh, Jody and Miss Jody. It's, a, it's that time of year again, right? It is. It's uh, homecoming on the mountain, and we are so excited. It's been a great week this week at York Institute. A uh, lot of hard work and energies went into the floats, and we've had spirit contests and door decorations. And, uh, yeah, it's just been, been a, a great week. And, of course, tonight's the big ball game coming up at, uh, at 7 o'clock tonight. We'll have the kickoff. Actually, what time is the homecoming activities going to start? Uh, homecoming activities are going to start about 6.30, 6.35. Uh, so come on out and get you a seat a little bit before that so you can be sure to see uh, the queens and, and the top three superlatives. And uh, Miss Danielle Vols, uh had the Miss Mountaineer pageant, and she started a new thing, and we're going to announce all those winners before the game, too. So just come out and, and enjoy the pregame festivities. And the parade's getting ready to get upon us right now as uh, we have, uh, as always, the uh, local law enforcement doing a great job as they direct traffic for us every time. They do, and, uh, you know, we have uh, Mr. Chris Anderson is our school resource officer, um, and we are just so tickled that uh, we have them to patrol our campus and keep us, try to keep us safe. And right behind them, we have the Alvin C. York JROTC Dragon Battalion uh, ROTC. And this year, we have a, a new uh, ROTC instructor. Uh, I'm going to call him Sergeant Ted just because I don't know <laughs> what his last name is. And then we have our Grand Marshal. Yeah, this year uh, is Miss Nancy Gernt. She is a dear friend of mine. She worked at York Institute and uh, for many, many years. She serves on many committees at uh, York Institute, and we are thrilled that she uh, agreed to be our And then behind uh, that, we've got our, our cheerleaders. We do. Let's, 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 come on, girls, let's make some noise. There we go. <laughs> that, that's, that's some cheer. That's some pay up. And they are coached by Miss Danielle Bulls, and uh, that she, she does a great job with them. And here come the Dragons. we got to see if they can make more noise. Hey, guys, you got to make more noise to the cheerleader. Let's go now. Let's go. Let's go. And, of course, the Dragons going to be taking on the White County Knight. Uh, they're pumped up for this. They are. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of energy flowing out at York Institute this morning. They had a big pep rally, got everybody pumped up. So we're, we're looking for an exciting game tonight. Um, so hopefully everybody will come out and support the Dragons, wear your purple and your gold, and, and fill the stands out there. And, of course, we want to thank Jennings Funeral Home, our sponsors, for our uh, video and uh, live broadcast of the parade and our homecoming activities tonight. Absolutely. It's uh, it's new to be here. We've always been uptown, but I, I was glad to know we were going to be a little bit closer to the school today. And now we got the pep club rolling by us we, here, and we got we got to have a little more pep of that. Come on, guys. Pep up a little bit here. And then so behind that, we've got, I think, our first queen. And well, it is. It's the YEI football queen, Miss Jada Garrett. And Miss Jada is the football queen, and she's uh, being escorted today by her you know, dad. The, that's, her dad. And, uh, that's her dad Keith. driving her, which is also a, a football coach. All righty, let's. And next, we have uh, the homecoming prince and princess, uh, Lucas Hurst and Miss uh, Carrie Coger. 
And they're coming throwing candy out to the crowd, and these young people having, look like they're having a good time. They are. They had some pictures this morning, and they're going to be uh, carrying the flowers and the crowns uh, across the field tonight to crown our, our two queens. So, and they were pretty excited this morning. So we, and they were so cute in their little outfits. So you guys need to come out and, and uh, look at them. And then behind that, we got another one of our. Uh, we, we have uh, the homecoming queen and the 2019 Miss Ferris of the Fair, Miss McKinley Waters. So McKinley gonna come through. And once again, uh, football game kicks off seven o'clock. That should be a good one. York and White County. Uh, White County playing pretty good right now, so York's gonna have a hands full tonight. They are, but I think they I think they can handle it. They've been practicing all week and um, working on some things, so I hopefully they'll, that's Miss McKinley. And then behind that we have? We have Mr. and Mrs. Y.I., and that's Austin Waters and Lily Cananser. And they're coming through, and uh, Lily, a member of the uh, Lay Dragon, I think she's on the softball, softball team. Softball, basketball. basketball. Mm -hmm. and, and behind them, we have the Duke and Duchess of Citizenship, uh, Kendall Franklin and Rachel King. And these uh, young ladies and uh, guys, they're going to be all recognized tonight again as well. They right? are. They are the, the, These are the top three superlatives of York Institute that's voted on by the faculty and staff. So it's, a, it's really an honor for these, these groups of, of uh, kids. And next we have the Prince and Princess of Personality. And also um, she is the senior attendant, uh, Miss Kaylee South. And Johan West. And we just hope Johan don't try to celebrate here at Hurdy's Angle. And of course, <laughs> Miss Faye Stevens uh, is driving them, and she is a very good supporter of, of York Institute in anything that we do. So, and behind them, we have the 2019 Miss Mountaineer, Miss Lauren Schote. So this parade coming pretty quick, and now we got our senior class favorites coming up. Yeah, and these this group is a pretty special to me. This is uh, Miss Nyla Bomer and uh, Mr. Hunter Rains. So uh, they uh, coming through, waving to the crowd. Hey, Hunter. And then behind that, we've got uh, the first float, I believe, coming this is, up. This is the class of 2020 uh, 20 float. And, of course, our theme this week was game on. So uh, it's they're, they're sitting on a float looking at, at the uh, TV screen, getting I guess getting ready to get their game on. So we, this is our first float. This is a senior float, and, of course, they'll have the announcement of who wins the float contest tonight as well. Yes, and they will have the winner of the Spirit Week, the freshmen, junior, seniors. They've all been in a competition this week, so all of those winners will be announced uh, at halftime along with the float winners. And then behind that we have a, a nice old truck. Yeah, nice. and this is carrying the York Elementary uh, cheerleaders. And York Elementary cheerleaders making their way through. And, uh, of course, uh, as we said, it all uh, culminates tonight with the uh, big uh, game. But uh, last night, a big uh, bonfire and stuff as well last night. Absolutely. We had a, a great time, another great turnout. Uh, thanks to all those sponsors that put that on. The community comes together. And, uh, you know, that's what it's about is the, fin the children of Fentress County. And we are so thankful for everybody that had any part in doing that. And behind that, we have our junior class favorites. We do. It's Miss Millie Hull and Ryan Webb. And Millie's also Millie and Ryan both are members of the Dragon and Dragonettes basketball teams. And behind them, we have the class of 2021 20, junior float. Yeah, and this one's a good one. This is an Miss Tamara Brown is job. driving, and she says that's going to be the winner. So uh, it is uh, pretty awesome. That's pretty good. That one's good. Uh, <laughs> Super smash the Warriors. So. And then behind that we have, I think. Uh, we are coming. It's the class of 2021 junior attendant, Miss Megan uh, Emma Jones. And she is also riding with her is Miss Ventress County Hope Foundation, Ellie Jones. Well, I'll tell you what, let's, uh, well, we've got a little bit of a break here. Let's take a quick time out for this word from, uh, from Jennings Funeral. We'll be right back. The love of a family is a very special thing. From the time we're children, it's our family that teaches us how to walk and how to talk. 
It's our family that gives us a sense of belonging. The wisdom of our grandparents is passed down through our parents and then on to future generations through our children. The love of a family never grows old. It just grows. And Jody, behind that we have, now we, I come through. We have the Pine Haven Student Council. And members of the young, these young guys from Pine Haven to wave into the crowd. And behind them we have the Fentress Crush Crown Bearer, uh, Dooley uh, Green, and Miss Darcy Wright. And congratulations to Crush this year. They had a good season, went 4-3 uh, and three this year. Had some outstanding games this year. And behind them is the Pine Haven Crush Homecoming Queen, uh, Sierra Brooke Wilson. And uh, behind that we have... We have the South Fentress, uh, Fentress Crush Homecoming Queen, Miss Paige Swafford. Paige has come through in the old Ford pickup truck. Yeah, that's one thing this county's got a lot of is a lot of old vehicles, <laughs> old nice vehicles. Old nice vehicles and uh, some pretty beauty queens. We're going to let's call it, call it let's call them vintage. <laughs> that's a new word for it, vintage. And Chris Wofford there behind the wheel waving to the crowd. <laughs> and behind them we have the York Elementary Crush Homecoming Queen, Lydia Thurman. Lydia's come through. Then looks like uh, maybe got uh, some of the first uh, the younger. Dragons, the, the future it's dragons. It's going to be the Pee Wees and the Junior Bulldogs. And let me tell you, they were out at the high school and they were pretty hopped up, let me tell you. So they're coming through as Prey continues to make its way our direction. And uh, so we may have just a little bit of a break after these guys. Looks like they're slowing them down just a little bit. And uh, here comes through. This is the crush. <laughs> they're, they're miles, eight miles. And these guys making their way through. <laughs> and they're going to make their way through. And uh, we, the crush, the crush this year went four and three on the season. Good year for the crush. We got a little bit of a break here again, so let's take another quick timeout. We'll be right back. One of the most thoughtful ways to provide for your family is with advanced planning. That's especially true of funeral arrangements. You can secure the cost, make the plans, and reduce the stress of a very stressful time. Our dedicated staff will help you choose from an array of options and services, and you're under no obligation. Call us and pre-plan your legacy of life. Jennings Funeral Homes, sharing a legacy of life. And once again, thanks to Jennings Funeral Home for setting us up. They set us up with a truck here to film off of, and we're right here in front of their uh, location here in Jamestown. they got two locations, Jamestown and Clark Range. We appreciate them. And uh, we got another group of uh, youngsters coming up, and uh, got, these kids are pumped up. They are pumped up. Uh, these are the, uh, maybe this is the juniors. Maybe the peewees were first, and these are the juniors. Because Actually, I those see. were the crush there that went through a moment ago. Okay, so. well. These are going to be the bull, the. As always, a, a little out of line, right? Yeah. They're, <laughs> but they're, they're the, this is the peewees right here, okay? Yeah. Then the, the, and the junior. And these young men are the future of uh, York football and the future yeah. of that. And there's Tim yeah. behind the wheel uh, blowing the horn. And uh, all these guys come through. Uh, we appreciate these guys as uh, they make their way through, waving yeah. to the crowd. And. Uh, Throwing candy at Throwing us. candy. I, I, I've yet to be hit. This is the first year I've not been hit. So. <laughs> and then behind that, it looks like we've got another group of young uh, football players. And this uh, should be the senior Bulldogs. And now they will be the guys moving up to crush, crush. next year. So those guys, they're, they're some good uh, football players. These guys had outstanding seasons. I know uh, one, of them, one of the teams was playing for the championship this year. So. They always have a good program. It's a great feeder program for the Dragons. It is. And, you know, I've, I've been out to a couple of the Crush games this year, and, and like, like you said, they're good little athletes moving up to be future Dragons, and we're just uh, we're pretty proud of that here in the county, that we've got such good feeder programs for basketball, football. And uh, that's something, uh, as you, you mentioned, we have good feeder programs for every sport here. Yeah, we sure do. And, uh, you know, and that's why I love Jamestown, Tennessee, and the little community we live in uh, is, is for that. That we have all kinds of things for the, the kids to, to be in and be a part of. And 
Uh, and actually, the community is just, I mean, we got great support everywhere we go. And, uh, you know, a lot of folks, uh, you'll see a lot of these high schools, they've got good home crowds, but York folks on the road, if you go on the road with the Dragons, you're going to have a good crowd while we're with you. We sure do. And right behind them, we got the Bulldog cheerleaders. I think that's the loudest group we've had today. Yeah, I think so. They Young uh, youngsters going to be some great cheerleaders down the road. Then we got the York Automotive Department in a really nice vehicle. That's Alec, yep, Alec uh, Crabtree and uh, Will Delk in a, a 1930 model A Ford, and they have restored that out there at school. So my, Mr. Dennis Wright is the, the instructor, and he's doing a, just a, an outstanding job in, in the automotive, auto mechanics class. And here comes the auto mechanic uh, class. Uh, and there's uh, uh, Mr. Wright right now. So, uh, yeah, just good things going on in that in, in the vocational department. and. And here comes the FFA. Uh, they're coming through on the tractor fitting. Yes, uh, that's <laughs> Mr. J.C. Potter. He's one of the uh, FFA sponsors. He and Miss Marissa Wright, she's on the back. Um, FFA uh, club is doing a lot of great things too. So they're they're into soil judging, horse judging, just all kinds of, of good stuff. Well, I, years ago, I was once a soil judge. Really? Not good, but I was <laughs> one. <laughs> Behind them, we have the FFA sweetheart, Amber Delk. So. And behind that, we have the FFA okay. attendant. Yep, freshman attendant, Isabella Baxter. And then coming up, the York fishing team. Now, these guys are just getting their season started. These guys, now this is a sport that uh, even old people like me can do. <laughs> yeah. And they're, they're doing a, a great job, uh, Mr. Brett Patton is uh, over the bass fishing team and, and they, they're they going and participating and winning and having a great time. And they always, they have a great program. It's not very, they've not had it very long, but it's been Once really, again, they have really feeder, good. They have a feeder program also, so in the county. So, and you know, it takes, like I said, parents and the community to support, support the kids and, and they sure do that. And behind them, we have the YEI student council. So the student council coming through. And behind them, we got the YI Choir and Noteworthy. And tonight at the football game at halftime, um, previous Noteworthy members will be there to perform. So looking, I'm looking forward to that. And they're singing right now as, uh, see Jeremiah there. Jeremiah, a member of the WDB staff. <laughs> and behind them, we have the uh, 2019 sophomore attendant, Miss Emma Hewling. And then uh, behind that, we have the class favorites. Yes, uh, Nicholas uh, Smith and uh, Lacey Patton. And members of the basketball team, uh, great, great player. And behind them, we have the class of uh, 2022 uh, float. And it looks like the Monopoly is a Monopoly board, so they're getting their game on with that. So uh, folks on uh, video, you'll be able to see this if you're watching live on the cable. Thanks for joining us. And not, we'll be replaying this on Sunday. And then the Allard uh, cheerleaders coming through. Behind the Allard cheerleaders, we have the freshman attendant. Yes, Miss Sophie Story. Sophie coming through, waving to the crowd. And uh, Behind them, we have the uh, freshman class favorites with which is uh, Mr. Eli Kirby and uh, Miss Gabby Beatty. Come through. And they're being in a nice vintage truck. Vintage, that's our new word. Vintage, for vintage. yeah. And behind them we have the class of 2023 float, which is a, a Dragon Arcade, and that that's awesome. I tell you, it's going to be tough judging these. Yeah. Right. I'm glad I'm not a judge. I've been in front of a lot of judges, though, but does that count? <laughs> <laughs> and then, next we have the Baby Miss Hope 2019 Miss Lillian uh, Brooke Lloyd. Coming through the uh, crowd. And then next up we've got uh, the Tiny Miss Hope and Rotary Tiny Toddler Lakeland Lane. Lakeland what coming a through. cutie. Look at her with her little purple and gold on. Yeah, she's, re she's ready for the game tonight. Yeah. 
And behind that, we have the tiny Miss Mountaineer, Miss Nella Ramsey. And she, yes, and also the little Miss Mountaineer, uh, Maddie Grace Garrett, is in there with her. So a couple of uh, beauty pageant winners, and uh, we got a lot of beauty pageant winners in this county. We do, and behind them is the 2019 Little Miss Fair to the Fair, Addison Grace Stevens. So Addison coming through. Uh, oh, don't, don't, oh, we, oh, what's her dad's name? <laughs> Jamie said we had to talk about him, so we, we're going to talk behind, about her dad. Behind the, uh, them, we have a vintage car. And then uh, behind that, we have... Uh, the, the 2019 uh, Rotary Club Ambassador Queen, Miss Daly Marie Brannon. So she's coming through, the Ambassador Queen. Hey. And now we got the young Miss Hope and uh, Ambassador Myra Schott. She's coming through waving the crowd, throwing out candy. And uh, as I said, got a lot of beauty pageant winners in this county. Got a lot of really pretty young ladies. Yeah, and right behind her, we have the 2019 Miss, uh, young Miss Mountaineer, Lily Can Answer. And uh, the 2019 Junior Miss Hope Foundation Queen. Yes, and that's Miss uh, Joanna Compton. And then the Fentress County Ferris Princess. Yep, Miss Zoe Gibson. So we come through throwing out candy to the crowd. They, and now we're, we're in the beauty section of our thing. This we are. And behind her is the 2019 Young Miss Mountain. No, sorry. Junior Miss Mountaineer, Marley Winningham. And Crush Homecoming Queen. And then behind that, we got the 2009 Fentress County Ferris Junior Miss. Yep, that's Miss uh, Bentley Flowers. Wave into the crowd, and then behind that, we've got another. The Teen Miss Ferris of the Fair, uh, Mackenzie Ma uh, Marie Potter. So Mackenzie coming through. And behind her, we have the 2019 Teen Miss Standing Stone, uh, Kenley Brook Sparks. Kenley Brook coming through. And behind her, we have another queen. We do. We have the 2019 Miss Teen Rotarian, Miss Emma Stevens. And then I think we have uh, another uh, beauty queen. We do. We have the 2019 Senior Miss Ferris to the Fair, Miss Shirley Perigen. So, uh, like I said, a lot of beauty pageants here in the county. And uh, and behind them, we have Amanda Howard, uh, attorney at law, and she's got her two young girls on there. And behind them, we've got the Boy Scout Troop uh, 130. So 1.30, the Boy Scouts coming through, and that's uh, going to bring up uh, the rescue squad and the fire department, which means signals the end of our parade. So a uh, great parade, 61 uh, entrants in that, and uh, just an outstanding parade as always, Jody. Uh, it, it is, and, and like I said, you know, a lot of time and energy went into the floats and people registering for the parade, and, um, you know, we, we uh, hope it to see everybody out at the uh, – uh, football game tonight, we'll have pregame activities. We've got the, the floats will be sitting out there. So if you miss the parade and you're just coming to the football game, so you'll get to see all all the hard work that went into those. And give us those times again as far as the uh, pregame activities. Uh, pregame st activities start about 635. Uh, and, of course, uh, kickoff is at 7. Um, and I will say that um, tonight is, uh, for all the class of 1994, uh, that's my class. What, we're having our 25th class reunion in the parking lot uh, at the football field, so come out and join us. And, uh, you know, we've, we've been reminiscing all week on Facebook about 25 years and what those, what memories we have of high school. And, you know, it, it, this week, homecoming week is my favorite time of the year to dress up and uh, have spirit. And so uh, it's just been a great week at York Institute. And so just come out and, and support the Dragons tonight. And, of course, uh, as we said, it's uh, going to be a big night, a big, big night. Got a big, big, big football game coming up. We're going to come back, and we will uh, give our predictions for tonight's game right after this. When you're called upon to make funeral arrangements, it can all be overwhelming. That's why we go out of our way to help you keep the focus on family. There is no higher priority when creating a lasting memory of a loved one. Above all, 
What's required is sensitivity, compassion, and respect. And back here on uh, at uh, Jennings Funeral Home. Thanks once again to uh, Billy and uh, Billy Jr. and all the guys at the Jennings Funeral Home for letting us sit up here and use their Wi-Fi and everything so we can do this live on the cable and also live on WDEB. Well, Miss Jody, it's that time again. It's time to give our annual predictions on what we think is going to happen tonight. I know, and you always, you always get me in trouble with this, but I'm going to go um, in favor of the Dragons, of course, uh, 28 21. I'm going to I'm I'm about there with you. I'm going to say it's going to be 28 to 14 York cuz I'm going to get say touch damn dragons at least four times tonight. Well, I sure hope so. <laughs> I, I really do. So but, uh, folks, uh, don't forget, come on out. We, the ball game starts at 7, but the pregame stuff uh, all going to start earlier. Come on out and check everything out. There's going to be a lot of tailgating going on, so come on out to the I think Alive in the Spirit's going to be doing a tailgate out there tonight. So come on out, check it out. It all gets underway at, uh, I think, uh, the uh, – pre Pregame stuff starts at, at 6.30, but if I were you, I'd come a little early to get me a good seat. And like you said, there's a lot of tailgating going on. Just going to be a lot of, of spirit going on out there, so come out and join and make sure you wear your purple and gold, and hopefully we'll have our stands uh, packed to, to cheer the Dragons on to another victory. And, of course, uh, if you can't come to the game now, be sure to join us on uh, WDB. We'll have a live broadcast. But come on out and come on over and say hello to me and Gary Hall. The, the G-Men will be there tonight, so be sure to join us for that. Until tonight, 415-104 Sports, I'm Gary Clark. We'll see you. Well, first of all, thanks uh, to Miss Jody Hancock for coming out tonight. Now, we'll see you at the game. The love of a family lasts forever. From generation to generation, the love just grows. From grandparents to fathers, mothers, brothers, and sisters, there is a legacy of love. The love of a family is a very special thing. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to York Institute and the 2019 Homecoming Festivities. The first group we would like to introduce tonight is our first annual Tiny Miss, Little Miss, Young Miss, and Junior Miss Mountaineer, as well as the 2019 Miss Mountaineer. First off tonight is our tiny Miss Mountaineer, Miss Nella Ramsey. Nella is the daughter of Dustin and Adrian Ramsey. Also tonight, our little Miss Mountaineer, Miss Maddie Garrett. Maddie is the daughter of Rockford and Ashley Garrett. Also tonight, young Miss Mountaineer, Miss Lily Canadser. Lily is the daughter of Chad and Jennifer Canadser. Also tonight, Junior Miss Mountaineer is Miss Marley Winningham. Marley is the daughter of Andy and Amanda Winningham. Our 2019 Miss Mountaineer is Miss Lauren Schott. Lauren is the daughter of Wade and Amy Schott. 
Tonight, she is being escorted by senior football player Zach Lohr. Zach is the son of Rob and Julie Lohr. Also being escorted tonight by Andrew Beatty. Andrew, his parents are Steve and Karina Beatty. The next group of students that we would like to introduce is the top three superlatives that were voted on by the faculty and staff of York Institute. These students are chosen for their dedication and hard work during the four years at York Institute. First off tonight, Prince and Princess of Personality is Mr. Johan West and Miss Kaylee South. Johan is the son of Kevin and Sue West, and Kaylee is the daughter of William and Keisha South. Also tonight, the Duke and Duchess of Citizenship is Mr. Kendall Franklin and Miss Rachel King. Kendall is the son of Jason and Sonia Franklin, and Rachel is the daughter of Scott and Sissy King. The 2019 Mr. and Mrs. YAI are Mr. Austin Waters and Miss Lily Canancer. Austin is the son of Willie and Bobby Joe Waters, and Lily is the daughter of Eugene and April Knetzer. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please give a round of applause for their accomplishments, for being chosen by the faculty and staff. These are your superlatives. At this time, we're going to introduce our 2019 homecoming queen and her court. First off, freshman attendant, Miss Sophie Story. Sophie is the daughter of Stacy Story and Sean Story. Tonight, she is being escorted by senior football players, Thomas Miller and Jonathan Walker. Thomas is the son of Cliff and Rhonda Miller, and Jonathan, Jonathan is the son of Kenny and Patricia Walker. Also tonight, sophomore attendant is Miss Emma Hewling. Emma is the daughter of Mashana Hewling and Elsie Hewling. Tonight, she is being escorted by senior football players, Zach Holden and Bailey Hahn. Zach is the son of Donovan and Tracy Wright, and Bailey is the son of Arthur Walker. Also with us tonight, junior attendant is Miss Megan Jones. Megan is the daughter of Tandy Sitton and Abe Jones. Tonight, she is being escorted by senior football players, Kellen Buck and Homer York. Kellen is the son of Chip and Larissa Buck. And Homer is the son of Steve and Gloria York. Also tonight, your senior attendant is Miss Kaylee South. Kaylee is the daughter of William and Keisha South. She is being escorted tonight by senior football players Landon Martin and Edward Stockton. Landon is the son of Michelle Martin and Jamie Ipock. Edward is the son of Wade and Amy Stockton.
And with us tonight is our 2019 homecoming prince and princess, Mr. Lucas Hurst and Miss Carrie Coger. Lucas is the son of Josh and Tricia Hurst, and Carrie is the daughter of Dustin and Sierra Coger. The 2019 homecoming queen is Miss McKinley Waters. McKinley is the daughter of TJ and Michelle Waters. She is being escorted tonight by senior football players, Alex Crownover and Johan West. Alex is the son of Bruce and Dana Crownover, and Johan is the son of Kevin and Sue West. Also with us tonight, the 2019 football queen is Miss Jada Garrett. Jada is the daughter of Matt Garrett and Ashley Nolan. Tonight, she is being escorted by the captain of the Dragon football team, Mr. Aaron Tallett, and co-captain, Zach Strong. Aaron is the son of Richard and Lynn Talent, and Zach is the son of Malcolm and Velma Strong. Ladies and gentlemen, we present to you your 2019 homecoming queen and her court. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. Make some noise for all of these fine ladies and gentlemen. And welcome, and welcome to uh, York Institute as we're set for some football action uh, tonight. It's the Dragons of York Institute homecoming 2019 as the Dragons take on the uh, Sparta or White County Warriors, uh, whichever you prefer, as we get set for that action here on WDEB. want to thank you for joining us. Join me as always, Gary Hall. And Gary, uh, this one, uh, one York really could use to get some momentum heading in that last region run. Yeah, it is, Gary. You know, it's a big game for York. Um, you know, the unfortunate part is um, White County bringing a pretty good football team up on the mountain tonight. 
is not the doormat we've seen in the past few years for the White County Warriors. They've had some struggles over the past few years. We'll talk about that, plus we'll look at uh, some other action coming up. We'll also have some stats for you, and we'll take a look at the two top 11 in the Associated Press as uh, several area teams in that top 11, plus uh, several that York's played. We'll take a look at all that, plus a whole lot more right here on the Progressive uh, pregame show. We'll have that coming up, as well as the scoreboard from last week, and look at next week's action or this week's action as well. All that's coming up in just a moment. Cheer this year for all our school teams and activities. Get behind our local schools. Join the parent teachers group and help improve the quality of education. Sponsor school activities. Go to a ball game, hear a concert, reach higher. Progressive Savings Bank, insured by FDIC. Right back here on the Progressive pregame show. And, uh, Gary, uh, tonight York comes in two and three. White County comes in three and two. White County, though, for the past few years have been pretty much a doormat. Um, I mean, I, you don't like to say that, but they were pretty much a doormat because they had struggled score, they had winning anything in the last few years. And long forgotten is they came into this season with the state's longest losing streak. They'd lost 23 in a row, but they beat Cannon County on opening night to break that streak. And... You know, they've reshuffled a little bit, Gary. They've dropped out of their region, which was one of the stronger 5A regions in the state. So, um, you know, they've dropped out for a couple of years trying to reorganize their football program, get back on track. And, of course, they've beaten Cannon County this year. They've also beaten Cumberland County 31-20. to They edged Walker Valley 32-29. They've lost to CAK at 32-29, to and they lost to Cookville. 43 to 12 so they play some good teams gary and they they beat some good teams they have they're coming off a huge win against walker valley um last friday night at home uh, walker valley a 5a team and um you know a good a good win for them they're coming up here they're comf- a confident football team now the last time these two teams played was back in 2016 in white county that year gary a roll over york 42 21 and york is only two and six since 2009 against white county well you know white county's a 5a school got a lot more kids and you know they uh, have a lot to choose from um program's been down the last three years and uh unfortunately york haven't played them those three years but um they're trying to come back around now and um trying to get it back on level footing again. When you talk about how important this game is, Gary, as far as momentum-wise, next week we got Upperman, and if you look in 3A, Upperman's sitting at number eight. Uh, they're up, or actually holding at number eight, and, Alco- of course, Alcoa's number one. And single A, uh, we're getting uh, ready to go for, I think, our national anthem here in a moment, but single A, Clay County is number 10, Monterey's number 11, Coalfield's number nine, in double a watertown three trousdale four oneida number 10 they're down one actually in 4a it's livingston number eight a team we'll see here in a couple of weeks and they're up two spots to that number eight and then 5a beach is number two well i think we're going to have our national anthem and uh, pregame uh, ceremony so we'll take this break and we'll be right back <laughs> This is Mark Justice wishing our York Dragons a successful football season. We are proud once again to sponsor Dragon First Downs. Progressive Savings Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Checking out last week's district action, it was... Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the turn 
twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, o'er the ramparts we watched, were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red Progressive Savings Bank, insured by FDIC. Everything we do, it's true. We do for you. And back here, your kids too. We're just getting through with our national anthem and the color guard leaving the field. We'll uh, get to uh, the coin toss here in a moment. Thank you for joining us for the progressive uh, pregame show. Gary, if you take a look at this season for York, York has put up 93 points a season. They're averaging 18.6. White County has put up 121 points. They're averaging 24.2 points a game. But uh, if you take a look at allowed, York's allowed 96 points, which is 19.2, and uh, White County's allowed 130, which is an average of 26. So pretty much even as far as stats-wise go. Really, it is, Gary, you know, and um, you expect it to be a pre-match football game. Um, I think, uh, you know, White County will bring in some skilled players, and uh, they're, they're good at the skill positions, and they, um, you know, that'll be something that York will have to be cognizant of. Um, they're they, they're going to be a primarily a running team like most teams are, but they do throw the ball, and they throw it probably more – you know, York's seen a couple of passing teams this year, and so it won't be a big surprise, but they mix it up pretty good. Um, you know, we saw Smith County throw it quite a bit last week, and I think you'll see something similar this week. Well, now, of course, uh, York has took on uh, Grace Christian, who happens to be the number nine team in Division two, two A, so they're a good team as well. They threw the ball a lot. Yeah, they did, you know, but uh, York uh, didn't have the best of first quarters in that game, you know, against the pass, but the other three quarters, they defended the pass pretty well, Gary. You know, done a good job defensively against their passing game. And if you look at individuals, the tough thing for York, uh, Gary, and Thomas Miller still out. He had 350 yards in four games and, uh, of course, didn't play last week, not playing this week. He's averaging 87.5 yards. That's a big loss. It is a big loss, you know. He's out of the boot though, or off of the, um, you know, off the bicycle, and he's um, on two feet. So hopefully we'll see him back in the lineup here soon. Um, also, see I saw Dalton Barger walking around over here before the game started, and also I noticed um, there might be a couple of others. I'm not sure, but that's the two that I've noticed. Yeah, a couple of uh, players uh, for York uh, still on the injured list, and. Uh, We'll hopefully get those guys back soon. I think uh, Barger, they said, maybe uh, toward the end of the season might get him back. And, Gary, uh, not only offensively do they miss Barger, but they really miss that uh, defensive play that he was able to do. They do. You know, he was kind of the quarterback on defense, too. You know, he was the um, strong safety and kind of patrol back there and had two interceptions in that game before he got hurt. So, um you know, he's a big loss as much defensively as he was offensively. Well, let's uh, give you our game time uh, sponsors. They are Fitters County Executive uh, Jimmy Johnson, State Representative John Mark Wendell, Hall's Family Pharmacy and Sports and Outdoors, First Volunteer, Gary Maxwell Insurance, Fitters Farmers Co-op, McDonald's, Meta Thrift, Condition Heating and Cooling, Twin Lakes, Pizza Hut, Southeast Drywall and Construction, our pre- and post-game shows brought to you by Progressive Savings Bank. Our Player of the Game brought to you by Hall's Outdoors 
the Sports and Outdoors and Family Pharmacy. Also, the Coach Derwin Wright Sports Show brought to you each Monday by the good folks at the Union Bank in Jamestown and Clark Range. Uh, Gary, I uh, didn't see you the uh, coin toss. Did you get that? I didn't see clearly who won. I'm going to assume York won and deferred, so White County will get the ball to start the game. It'll be York kicking off. So the Dragons going to kick off, and uh, they will uh, come out here looking uh, for a big homecoming win. And, Gary, when it comes to homecoming, if you don't win the homecoming game, it's kind of a, uh, I guess, to coin a phrase, a Debbie Downer, to say the least. Yeah, it's a big game, a big night, and, uh, you know, it's a win you really want to try to get. And, um, you know, uh, homecoming, it, it, it makes the festivities after the game go a whole lot better if you win the game. That's true, and, of course, uh, we've already had all the kissing of the Queens and all that good stuff, so we're getting ready for some football action here in just a moment. York and White County, uh, it's homecoming 2019 for the Dragons, and, Gary, it looks like a homecoming crowd over there, but uh, I think a whole section over there is the White County band. It is. They brought uh, three bus loads that made up the band tonight, and they filled up the visitor section, if you're familiar with the stands out here at York Institute, and... Their section is completely full for the most part, and uh, York's got the rest of it. It's uh, almost a capacity crowd over there, Gary. It's SRO, no doubt about it, because we got them standing around the sides and everything. But here we go. You're going to kick it off. It, it will be, I believe, that is that? Uh, uh, it's Caden Stover going to kick it off. And uh, uh, still, no, no. Um, Johan. Uh, Johan West not kicking off again tonight. So we'll see what uh, Stover can do. Stover had one of them run back last week. This one's going to be high and short, and he's going to drop and take a big hop up at the 15-yard line as he'll bring it up, and the first man misses, and the second one gets him, though, as on the return, that was number six, uh, Malachi Dowell. Yeah, you know, and uh, he let that ball bounce. Uh, had good speed and got a good return on it out to the 31-yard line, Gary, but... Um, if he picks that up cleanly, yeah, you know, that could have possibly been a big return. So a break for York right off the bat. And Cedric Leftwich will be the quarterback for the White County Warriors. Now we talked to the coaches from White County before. They said they've got some injuries as well. They've had three injuries this week in practice, plus one out that was six. And we'll see what Greenwich can do here. Or Leftwich, I should say. Leftwich takes the snap. He's, he's going to throw the first one out. It's got a man open over there on the quick out. He drops the football. York's going to pick it up. It's a scoop and down the sideline goes the Dragons. And it's going to be ran out of bounds at about the nine-yard line. So York with the big turnover to start the ball game. Great play by the Dragons. Yeah, you know, that pass just a little out pattern to number 40. The tied in Kay Clark and uh, he uh, turned it up the field Gary and just dropped it and um, I'm not sure who. I think it was Toman. I I'm believe it was Toman that picked it up and um, I thought he was going to score and uh, instead got pushed out of bounds at about the eight yard line so it's going to be first and goal from the eight and York's in great shape. Here. York's starting out early in this one that's what you want to see and now we're seeing something you never hardly ever see from York that is the pistol uh, wing T as they'll get it off up to uh, Cooper and Cooper bangs head to the four Gary and this is something I told Coach Derwin Ryan before the game he said something he used to run at Clarksville Academy I think maybe that's uh, the fact that Durham was having trouble getting that uh, connection from the center well, it could be partly that. Partly, you know, you you got to come up with a couple of new looks, too. And um, this is a nice one. Got five yards on first down, down to the three. So it'll be second goal. And this time they're going to uh, fake the handoff, give it off to a Cooper, and he takes it to the right side, and he's going to get to the one, I believe. About the one and a half, Gary, about a yard and a half. Uh, you know, what they've been doing now, that straight wing T is um, Cooper's been the fullback running uh, through the gaps between the center and the guards. And, um this allows him to get a little wider, maybe run a little more off the tackle, and that's what he did on the first two plays. And Gibbs is going to come in in place of him now, so uh, that's a little bit of a change as well. you got Durham back in the pistol, and uh, Durham's got uh, to his left Gibson now, and they'll fake the handoff, and it'll be Durham on the keeper, and he's doing nowhere. Gary, he's going to get stopped all the way back at the four-yard line as they sniff that one out well. Good job by number 20, Will Griggs, the cornerback. 
that was a bad decision by Jonah. You know, he had the option, you know, he had the run option there. He probably should have given that ball. The blocking was set up to follow the back, and uh, that had more of an opportunity than he did going around the end. So why can't he now, Gary, trying to uh, stave off a, a big mistake right off the bat if they can stop York here and keep them from scoring? This could be big for White County. Could change the momentum right back as in the gun goes uh, Durham. Durham this time straight ahead, and he's not going to get there, Gary. He's going to be stopped, and White County holds on down. So uh, White County, after the turnover, able to stop the Dragons. Yeah, you know, fourth and four, and York without a field goal kicker because of the injury to um, to to West, West and um, you know they went for it and. Looked like, uh, you know, um, Durham might get that to the end zone, Gary. Got past the first line, but there were three men there to meet him, hold him up short. So it's going to be first and ten now for the Warriors as they come in on the three-yard line, first and ten for White County. This will be their second play from scrimmage. Their first play was a fumble. As back in the shotgun is uh, Leftwich. Leftwich is going to take the snap, hand it off up the middle, and uh, there through the first line uh, goes the uh, back, and he gets some good yardage, Gary, and I believe that may have been. That's Jaden Richmond, the um, junior running back, and he got a nice gain off the right side, Gary. Yeah, he's going to get enough for the first down, about 11 yards on that one, so he'll get it to set first and 10 for the uh, Warriors. Say hello to Mike out of the dollar store. I was talking to Mike at the dollar store a while ago. He said, uh, say how, shout, give me a shout out. So there you go, Mike. <laughs> I believe we got encroachment against York here. So it's going to be a five yard penalty. And um, Coach Trout won't like that. But they jumped, and um, it's going to be first and five for Sparta now. White County must have saw the Smith County tape because they did that. They hard counted them a very, for the first few uh, series of plays, they hard counted them. Now the snap, they'll hand it off to the running back again. That one's going to be hit and dropped right at the 20. Maybe got a yard out of that, but that was, um, I believe that was Richmond again on the carry there, Gary, and uh, not, not much running room on that one. Yeah, he was stopped, bottled up quickly as... Uh, they tried to run in between the guard and the center in York, um, you know, always strong in their defensive line up there and was able to hold him up for maybe a yard. Left, which now will come up with a second, and uh, for them, though, it's going to be second and four, which that uh, five-yard penalty helped a whole, whole lot. Now they're going to drop back. They're going to air it out wide open over here. Number 26 has got the first down and more. Still on his feet up over the 30 to about the 35-yard line before he's brought down. And on the reception, that was number 26, Bradley McBride on the ride. Yeah, actually, that was Nathan McAllister, number 26, Gary, on the catch. And, um, you know, uh, Isaiah Strong had him trying to hold him up, and Gibson uh, trying to – Zach Gibson trying to come over to make the tackle. and He just dodged him and made him miss and got away from Strong, got about an extra six, seven yards out of that. So now left, which brings his squad up. One man in the backfield takes a snap. He's going to keep it himself, go right the middle, and bang ahead for about three yards as uh, that's just a – I think that was a design quarterback keeper on that one, Gary. It was. Um, they had the run pass option or the run option. They faked it to the back and just turned it up, got about four yards on that. So it'll be second and six. Second and six uh, for the uh, Warriors of White County. Uh, you were got the turnover early, got down to the one-yard line, couldn't punch it in. And now Leftwich back in the shotgun takes a snap. He's going to hand off to Richmond. He'll go straight ahead, and he's going to get a couple of yards. Going to be about the 39 before he's brought down. That's going to make it third down and about half the distance, Gary, about uh, five yards to go. Yeah, you no, know, good job by York. They were trying to run over the right side of their offensive line, Gary, and um, York done a good job of holding that one up, keeping it to a couple of yard gain. It's going to be third and four from right at the 40-yard line. So up will come the Warriors. York needing to stop on this one. Uh, but we've got a lot of uh, buffer space on this wide out. As they're going to hand out for Richmond, though. Or that cat, number 20. Number 20 is up over midfield. Still on his feet. Cuts back. He's kind of going to be brought down to the 31 of York. And a good run that time by number 20, Will Griggs. And Gary, we expected Griggs to do most of the carries. And that was his first one of the night. Yeah, you know, and we saw a little bit of his speed there as he cut through that hole. And once he got, got bounced to the outside and got around the corner, um, 
But a rag on the field. Yeah, we've got holdings most likely, and this is going to come back. But um, a good run by him. Uh, good job by York to run him down, actually. Yeah, York uh, took a good angle to get able to bring him down, but uh, that'll back him up. So the Dragons get a great big break there, Gary. Yeah, they do. That was, about a, that was roughly about a 30-yard run, you know, down to the 30-yard line. Instead, it'll be holding, and uh, it'll come all the way back to the 33-yard line where it'll be third and about 11. Yeah, so third and 11 now for the Warriors as up will come Leftwich in the shotgun. He's got Griggs to his right. They'll take the snap. They'll throw it out quickly to Griggs, and that one's too high, and Griggs can't hang on to it. And that'll bring up fourth down. So the Dragons uh, stopped the Warriors, Gary, but uh, the Dragons had a golden opportunity, and the Warriors held them up, and now the Dragons going to get the ball back. Yeah, they are, and, um, you know, that was a that was not a good pass by left with Jim. You know, had his back uh, circling now the backfield there out in the out on the flank, and um, he just overthrew him. Uh, it had a little bit of rain room. I thought York probably had covered before he got a first down, though, unless he broke a couple of tackles. So now it's going to be punt situation. The snap is back, and they'll punt it, and York got some pressure on it, but uh, it's going to be not a great punt at all. <laughs> uh, that one, Gary, almost rolled back to the line of scrimmage. That was a seven-yard punt that actually rolled backwards four yards. So, Annette, three-yard punt on that one. Um, he tried to do that rugby-style thing, Gary, and uh, wait till the pressure come to kick it and then kicked it off the side of his foot. It was a horrible punt. Yeah. And actually, they're going to mark it at the 38, so it'll be a five-yard punt. So, a five-yard punt. I, I, I think I could give us a five-yard punt. I'm not sure. <laughs> that one just uh, really ugly for from the word go as now here come the dragons good field position again they're at the 38 yard line of the warriors got a man in motion they'll hand it off to that man in motion and he'll bang it up to the 35 that was castellan on the carry and you know they're with with um durham in the shotgun gary and they're running the versions of that wing t that back has got to get he gets a full running shot at this thing before they snap the ball because he's running really wide now so now it's second and six for the Dragons. Now, as we said, this is something you don't expect to see from uh, Coach Derwin Wright's team, but he did run this back when he was in uh, Brentwood, I believe it was, that he was at. And uh, now that quick out by the Dragons. Oh, and that was dropped there by the Dragons uh, receiver as uh, Caden Stover, Gary, had some daylight ahead of him. You got to catch that ball. That ball is well thrown. It was right there. And he he could have, should have caught that in stride, Gary, and instead bobbled it and dropped it, and it's going to make it th third down for York now. So third and uh, about six and a half, seven yards for the Dragons. Yeah, I would call this two down territory, obviously, but they it, it's about th seven yards, really, you know, for the first down. You'd like to get part of it on this one if you're going to go for it on the fourth. As the Dragons get ready, they'll take the snap. They'll double handoff this time, and it's up the middle by the Dragons, up to the 30, where it's going to be fourth, and he's real close to a first down, Gary. That was Castellan. Actually, the original handoff went to Cooper. Cooper uh, hands it off to Castellan, who turns it up the field, and um, he's about a yard short right now, it looks like. Uh, they're taking a look at it, maybe less than a yard, so... Um it's going to be fourth down. I do. I, they're going to measure. It's close enough. They're going to take a look at it. I think he's going to be just a little bit short. but uh, I believe to... it's about a football, football and a half short just looking at it across the field. But, um, you know, a nice play on third down from York nonetheless and uh, a good gain. And this is a very manageable fourth down. Yeah, it's going to be very, very close as they push it. And you are about right. It's about a football, about a football length from being – about a couple of football lengths, yeah, maybe. two, two and a half, but it's it's uh, very close. And this is, uh, you know, uh, York can line up and try to play some power football right here. And here you may see York go back under center for this one. We'll see what they do here on this one as out will come Stover. York comes up with a fourth. We have got 5.33 left to go here in the first quarter. It's scoreless in this first quarter. Both teams have turned it over on downs, and White County has turned it over once on just a, a turnover. As the snap's going to be handed up the middle to Cooper, and Cooper bangs ahead. He's going to get enough for the first down, Gary. He pretty much just had to lean in. 
Yeah, he did, and he got about a yard, maybe a little over a yard, but um, they just ran that over the center's back off the left yard and uh, was able to, like you said, lean forward there just enough for the first down, and he got a poor spot, Gary, and they're going to measure this. It, he got an awful spot. and Yeah, um, he did. That th- is... Th- this is not, uh, this doesn't look like any gain, and that looks short right now. Yeah, it may be uh, uh, just, uh, yeah. it looks like he may have got about the uh about a football and a half length. It may be a, just a tiny bit short. I'm going to say this is a end of the football one way or the other. And barely did the Dragons get it, or did they? No, they did not. Yep, yeah, first yes. down, just barely. They got it by the nose of the football. Whoa, that was close. That, yeah, I'm like you. That was a terrible spot. It, if you know anything about the football, it's got two white stripes on each end. That marker was outside the white stripe of the football, so it was two to three inches. So, um just enough, but that was a poor spot. And, yeah, uh, don't want that guy to walk the line tonight. He'll <laughs> he'll end up in the in the who's cow, as they used to say. Now, quick fake. Uh, they're going to hand it off over the right side to be up to the twenty five yard line. Bangs Castellon. Actually, no, that was Cooper. Cooper. Cooper that was Ben carry. Cooper on the carry, and uh, yeah, they gave it to the fullback there, and he gets about almost four yards on first down, Gary. So a nice first down run for Cooper. And, Gary, how tough is it, do you think, to uh, to switch your offense like you were cast tonight in a week's time period? Well, I'm sure they practiced it. It's the same variations, Gary. It's just, uh, you know, a little more running, a little more speed, a lot different look. Now the quick slant. Oh, just thrown behind Stover as uh, that was uh, mistimed, and evidently that must have been a mistake by the receiver because Coach Derwin Wright comes out yelling at the receiver. He's not looking at Durham. He was expecting, I think uh, that was maybe a, a actually he was supposed to come down and come back. Yeah, that that was, you know, it looked like he was running a slant route or a skinny post. And um, that ball, you know, if that, that's thrown where he's running, that goes for a touchdown because he was wide open, Gary. So now it's going to be third down and about six for the Dragons as up will come Durham. Durham in the shotgun. Takes a snap, hands it off Gibson. Gibson going to hand it back off inside, breaking the tackle. It's Castellon. Spins still on his feet, and he's drugged down at about the 21-yard line. So he's going to be short of the first down, Gary, but it's going to be, once again, a fourth and short. Yeah, fourth and about three this time, Gary. You know, three, three and a half yards, a little longer to convert here. And um, once again, we saw that double handoff, and that's what you use are able to use this sh- pistol or shotgun in this wing T, you can hand it to the fullback who can hand it, hand it to the wing coming through, and York's done that a couple of times now. We're down under four minutes here in the first quarter. It's scoreless here as York moving the football now. Got a fourth and about three for the first down. We're going to have a timeout call by York. Timeout on the field with a break in the action. Uh, under four minutes to play in the first quarter. We're scoreless. Crisp air, cool breeze, fall leaves, all the things autumn brings. It also brings Carrier's fall cool cash rebate promotion. Now until December 15th, take advantage of discounts on select energy efficient heating and air conditioning units. With financing options to fit any budget, you'll be ready to jump into fall and tackle any weather that comes your way. Carrier, turn to the experts. Call Condition Heating and Cooling for your free estimate today. Condition Heating and Cooling. It's a big fourth down coming up for the Dragons. They'd like to keep this drive alive. They got that turnover to start the ball game, had it on the one-yard line, couldn't punch it in, and now they're trying to move the football and uh, take the first uh, score of the game. York hasn't done that a lot. They haven't uh, scored a lot of points in the first half. No, they haven't. Something's a little different. Also, the whole first quarter's been played in York territory. So, um, you know, they've done a good job controlling field position, controlling time of possession, and – you know, have worked up a couple of first downs, have found these short yardage situations a little hard, tough going. Let's see what they do here. Fourth and short. They'll hand it off to Cooper. Cooper going to bang straight ahead, and Gary, he's going to be up to about the 18-yard line. Uh, one of the officials yeah. marking about the 18. I'm not sure. It looks short from here, Gary. It looks like that marker is about the 17-and-a-half yard line, and uh, it's going to be White County ball. So York comes up about a half a yard short, and the Dragons turn it over on downs. And, Gary, both teams move the football but just can't seem to uh, to get that uh, into the goal. No, they can. And, you know, um, that was a good stout run, and it just – 
you know, about a half a yard short, a good play call, and it was well executed. The offensive line's getting some blocks here and some other things, and um, hopefully, you know, we see York maybe mix this up a little bit between the traditional wing tee and this uh, pistol wing tee as well, you know, um, trying to give White County some different looks, throw them off balance. And now back in the shotgun goes uh, Leftwich. Leftwich with, uh, looks like uh, Griggs on the left. We'll fake it to Griggs. Now they'll toss it number six. He's on the end of round. He gets past one guy, gets past another guy, and he's on uh, the run, but he gets about seven yards before he's ran out of bounds, Gary. And uh, that one, York had a shot at dropping that one way back in the backfield. Yeah, number 54, Dustin Guy, got away with a um, block in the back there, a clear one where he pushed the York player past the runner there and as he is coming around and – if he doesn't do that, York may have a chance to make that tackle. That was a whole lot of running for number six, Malachi Dowell, and then he uh, was ran out of bounds with about a five-yard gain total. As now it will be in the shotgun. They'll give it off to uh, Richmond, and Richmond's going to be stopped right there as he'll die for him. They got Griggs. Griggs going to lose a couple of yards, Gary, and he had he not dove forward, he'd have probably lost about a nickel's worth. Good job by York. They just kind of rushed through the gaps, Gary, and nowhere to run. He couldn't get around the end and um, did kind of stumble forward for a couple of yards, but still it's a loss of a couple. And, um, you know, uh, York in, got them in third down here. Let's see if they can hold them. Third and long for the uh, Warriors. They'll take the snap, drop them back. They're going to air it out, and that one's going to be not uh, – Enough for the first down. doesn't look like it's enough for the first down from where they're marking it. Uh, that's going to be close, Gary. Yeah. I believe that is enough for a first down. Yeah, he, the receiver just went and kind of got it, went to the f ground with it. No, they're going to say it's short, Gary. They're, they're measuring, actually. They're going to measure this. It, it's really close, and it could be, you know, uh, notes of a football either way. So, um see what the measurement says here if it's fourth down you know it's an inter interesting decision for white county about yes. what they're going to do they got it just enough about half the football they got it by so first and 10 for the warriors and that was one of those plays gary where the uh, receiver just went to the uh, marker and uh, stopped yeah he did you know it was a five yard play he went five yards and turned the ball was there but you know, usually you hope you fall forward for a yard or two. York done a good job of holding him, standing him up. So now it's going to be first and 10 for the Warriors. They're at the 28-yard line, their own 28-yard line. Left, which back in the shotgun. We're down to 239 left to go here in this first quarter, an endless, a scoreless first quarter. Now, good defensive play by the Dragons. That quick uh, out pass, Gary, to number 26 was played absolutely perfectly by the Dragons' uh, Isaiah Strong. Yeah, and Nathan McAllister, the receiver on that, caught the ball, and uh, Strong grabbed him by the ankle and held him up, and uh, Zach Gibson come finished it, and uh, he probably wished he got down. Uh, Zach got a pretty clean hit on him there. And, and Gary, also, uh, their receiver out here with him was uh, should have actually been caught over a hole because he had a lamb full of jersey trying to keep Strong from getting to his receiver. He didn't make a good block on that. And now this time they're going to hand it off over the right side. There comes number five. He'll pull his way all the way down for a first down. About a 13-yard run there for Jaden Richmond. And Gary Richmond gets him up for another first down. The Dragons uh, gashed big time on that one. Yeah, they were, uh, you know, and they've got good speed out of their backs, Gary. He, um, you know, the, the blocking was set up good, and York didn't have anybody over there. So he got about 10 yards before he met any resistance. First and 10 now for the Warriors at their own 40-yard line. They'll take the snap, hand it off to Richmond again. And this time, Richmond going to run into a whole host of Dragons as he maybe got a yard on the carry. Yeah, and, you know, um, I think big Ricky Bobby come up with that one. Ricky Bobby and uh, Evan Tompkins there, too, to help make that tackle. Evan's coming up making a good tackle on that one. And uh, quite frankly, you're not going to run over Ricky Clark very often, Gary. No, Ricky takes up a lot of space, you know, um, we noticed they've got a couple of big linemen, too, but um, York can run Ricky Clark out there, and uh, he's as big as any of them. So now it's going to be a second and nine for the Warriors. Warriors trying to get into Dragon territory for the first time tonight. 
as they'll hand it off this time to Griggs. Griggs tries to cut back, and Griggs just good hard running on that one, Gary. Griggs just turned his back and just kept pushing forward, and he picked up a good chunk of yardage. Yeah, he got out to about the 46-yard line, but what was most impressive about that run is York had him spun around, and he just took his back and pushed his way back for about five more yards. They should have not stopped for about a one-yard gain. Instead, now, instead of third and eight, it's going to be third and about three here. So the Dragons need to stop here. Why County's yet to get in Dragon Terror. They actually got into Dragon Territory, but a holding call got them all the way back, and then they weren't able to do anything after the holding call. Back in the shotgun goes Leftwich. Snap, drops, looks, looks, being chased. Now he's going to dump one off. There's Griggs, and Griggs is going to get away from one, and Griggs went down back here, and, oh, that's a terrible spot. It's going to be short by about two yards, but it, he he uh, got a little bit of lean, and he comes up hobbling, Gary, so he there, he's going to run off the field, but that's the end of the first quarter. So end of one. It's scoreless here in this one. Uh, it'll be fourth down coming up for the Warriors when we come back. After one, nothing, nothing. At Hall Family Pharmacy, we are breaking the chain of large chain pharmacies. With our new local low cost prescription program, this hometown pharmacy is meeting and beating chain pharmacy prices. We are excited to offer a full list of generic prescriptions starting as low as $3. To see if your prescription is offered at these new low costs, check the list on our website, hallfamilypharmacy.com, or give us a call today at either Hall Family Pharmacy location. Hall Family Pharmacy, breaking the chain of national chain pharmacies. Quality workmanship and exceptional customer service have defined southeastern drywall and construction of Jamestown. From custom-built homes, residential construction, remodeling to commercial construction, southeastern drywall and construction is dedicated to providing the best quality at reasonable prices. We're also looking for good carpenters. Call southeastern drywall and construction at 931-267-5435. A proud supporter of sports and education in our area. And back here where we're getting ready for a fourth down for Y. Kenny and Gary. It looks like they're going to go for it on the York side of the field. Do you, you like the call? I do. I mean, they're out near midfield. Their defense has played fairly well. And, you know, even if they don't get it here, but they're lined up in four wides with a back. And now we're going to have some – do we have a timeout call by the coach or did we have movement? I believe we have a timeout, if I'm not mistaken. be a timeout York. York takes a timeout, so we've went one second into the second quarter. Actually, it should be any time in the second quarter, and uh, we got a timeout on the field. No score yet. Twin Lakes is building a fiber broadband network that gives you the connection you need to experience the gig difference. You deserve to stream without buffering, stay connected, or run a business with speed and reliability. With Twin Lakes Fiber Broadband, you'll have access to speeds up to 1 gig. That's 1,000 megabits per second. With fiber, you'll also have reliable voice solutions, robust TV services, and security and smart control systems for your home or business. Work fast. Play hard with fiber from Twin Lakes. Learn more by visiting us online at www.twinlakes.net. Some restrictions apply. Speed sign available in all areas right back here gary uh york had to burn a time out there it looks like uh coach uh, derwin wright wasn't happy with the setup that york had as far as their alignment no he saw something that wasn't right and uh, called the time out and white county gonna come out in a little different formation they had three wides right and one to the left now they got two on each side got a receiver in each slot let's see what they do and uh, York showing blitz. Uh, watch that corner blitz from uh, Strong over there on the far right side. He is now yeah, he's going to drop back into the. They're going to punt it. So uh, they fake the kick and punt it. And what a punt! That one's going to go all the way down to the six yard line. So Gary, I guess uh, the beauty of having a quarterback that can punt there that's going to pin the Dragons way back. It is, and, you know, not, didn't really think much about that, but they quick kicked out of that formation and left which with a great punt, and it rolled for about 20 yards additional. So um, York, uh, you know, they flip field position now, so York's going to start deep in their territory. We played the entire first quarter in York's end of the field, Gary, and now maybe we're going to see the, the uh, White County end of the field, well, unless York can move the ball. 
Yeah, York's got to put a drive together here. You got to get a sustained drive and make some chunk plays, some big yardage plays. Here come the Dragons. They're going to hand it off uh, to, uh, I believe, Castellon over on the right side. Couldn't see for sure. No, it wasn't Castellon. I believe that might have been, um, actually, um, Durham kept that ball, I believe. Yeah, Durham on the keeper. And he picks up about a yard, Gary. You're going to need to get a little more yardage than that. You need to get out of this hole down deep in the in your own territory. Well, you know, it shows some of his experience, in, inexperience at the position too, Gary, because um, he's still learning when how to read that option and when to keep that ball and when to give it up. And um, we've talked about ball handling. And now we see Toman split out wide to the left as you're going to – Fake the handoff off uh, that, and it'll be Ben Cooper going right up the middle, and Big Ben going to rumble up to about the 14-yard line. Actually, that was Castellon. Uh, Castellon. I, I thought it was 38, but it's just 8. Yeah, and he gets a nice gain out to about the 14-yard line. So it it's going to be, you know. Second and two. Um, third and third two. And two third, third and two. Third two, actually. So. The Dragons right here, Greg, to definitely use a first down. You want to get out of this deep hole you're in right now. You don't have to punt from here. No, you don't, and, um, you know, you you want to see, you know, they they bring all these snaps under center, so see another one here, maybe Ben Cooper in the fullback up the gut. Now they're going to give it out over to the side and trying to get the enough of the first down, getting the first down. Good job, Castellon. And Castellon got the corner that time. Gary got just enough for the first down. Yeah, they had good speed on defense, kind of strung that out, but not before – Nathaniel could get about three yards there and pick up the first down. Actually, give him four on that one. So the Dragons get a first and ten now at their own nineteen yard line, and they would love to put in a good long drive here with ten oh six left to go here in the first half, and maybe punch it in and run some of this clock off as well. So they've got a long way to go though. They're eighty one yards away from pay dirt, and Durham now under center this time. They got a man in motion. They'll give it up to Cooper up the middle, and Big Ben bangs straight ahead, and uh, he gets up to the 23-yard line. Nice hard running by Ben there. He uh, he pushed the pile forward a couple of extra yards there. Got about a five-yard gain on that one. And and, and also uh, throw a little in for Landon Martin. Landon Martin come in from behind and, and kind of help the push a little bit. Yeah, we saw that, and Castellon out trying to lead the charge, too, as the lead blocker. So now up will come the Dragons. Uh, back under center goes Durham. York switching back to that uh, normal wing T, and they'll hand it off. Uh, this time they'll pitch the pitch, a wide pitch, and that's going to be uh, on, still on the ground, and uh, White County's going to come up with it, and they're going to take it in the end zone. Did they they're not down it? it down. I started to say it was down there at the – Yeah, he was on the ground when he uh, had possession – first half possession of the ball, but they're going to mark it about the 16-yard line, or 11-yard line. So, Gary, that was uh, Actually, a poor pitch on that one. That was a, that pitch was way behind uh, Zach Gibson, had no chance at it. No, he didn't, and, you know, it was a good read, and actually uh, Gibson had some running room. Um, just a bad pitch. They misconnected on it, and, um, you know, it ends up in a turnover deep in York territory. So now the Warriors get their first chance to play in Dragon into the field as they're at the 11-yard line with a first and 10. Leftwich going to go in the shotgun. Hands it off up the middle, goes number five, a banging straight ahead for about a yard. That was Richmond on the carry. He got probably a cup. Well, maybe a, maybe a couple there down to about the 10, so it'll be second and eight. And they can't get the first down without scoring, but uh, they've got to get down to about the uh, one-yard line to get that first down. So second and long now for the Warriors. York needs to stop here, Gary. Uh, York got the ball deep in uh, Warrior territory to start the ball game, couldn't punch in. They need to return the favor here. Yeah, they do. Good job on first down by Yorko to plug up that hole and uh, hold them to about a two-yard gain and uh, make it second in a longer situation for them. This time they're going to hand to Richmond again straight ahead. Richmond's going to get a couple of yards, and he's going to be drugged down. And uh, he, he maybe got a yard. He didn't even get that. They're marking it right at the 10-yard line. So it'll be third and eight from about the 10. Uh, another good job by York. They 
trying to run that ball between the guard and the tackle off the left side. The left side is their side. They're they're running everything off the left side, Gary, and uh, York over there to stop it once again. So now it's going to be uh, with 7.47 left to go, uh, third and uh, eight for the Warriors. Third and eight left, which in the shotgun. Takes the snap, fakes the handoff, looking out to the right side, throws it out there wide open, number 26. Uh, He'll get into the end zone for a Warrior touchdown. That's going to be uh, Nathan uh, McAllister with the touchdown. And, Gary, he was so wide open, you thought we owed him money. Well, he ran a little slant there out of the slot and uh, was wide open. And that's where you miss somebody like a Dalton Barker who might come up and attack that area. And instead, nobody there. And he's able to get in for the score. And uh, White County uh, scores first. So the Warriors on the scoreboard, they uh, punch in the uh, – the, uh, Touchdown after the turnover, unlike York could do in the first quarter. And now Will Cheek will try to attack on the extra point. And he does. He kicks that one over the field house as uh, we go with seven and a half minutes left to go here in the first half. We've now got a 7 nothing White County lead. Managing your medications has never been easier. With Meta3 Pharmacy's MedPack, your medications come organized by date and time, securely sealed in individual, easy open packages. So when it's time to take your next dose, you just tear the package off the roll and your pills are there. That's all there is to it. No bottles, no bother. For more information, call us at 879-8133. Well, the Warriors take the early lead, Gary, as uh, we still have seven and a half minutes to go in the first half, and uh, the Dragons, uh, they t- they have the turnover. Why can't he capitalize? Why can't he have turnover? York didn't capitalize. That can key. It can, you know, and that was a huge turnover down here. York had picked up a first down and was trying to pick up another one, Gary, and the option pitch uh, went awry, and uh, York had two chances to get on. Both Durham and Gibson both had a chance to follow him. Didn't York, uh, White County recovers it and scores three plays later. So Will Cheek will kick it away now. Cheek just hit the extra point a moment ago and they got a good leg on him back is Caden Stover and uh, also Cooper, Ben Cooper. And it's an onside kick, and – Following a great job by the Dragons up, man. I'm not sure who that, that is. That was 53, Bailey Hahn. Bailey Hahn. there to fall on that. A nice job by him because they had four guys coming to recover that. They had that one. Uh, they thought they had that one, God. But good job by Bailey just to fall on it. The big guy coming up with a big play there. And now the Dragons, Gary, got great field position. Yeah, they do at the 45-yard line, 46-yard line. But, um uh, you know, if Han doesn't get that, they, they clearly have it. And um, they have it in good field position as well. So now it's going to be York with great field position as in the shotgun goes Durham. He'll take the snap, hand it off to uh, Gibson. Gibson bobbles it and then the dives forward to about the 50. He's close to the 50-yard line. One official is marking it right on the 50, but another one's right by this side of the 50 on the York side. And, Gary, that was another almost miscue on the handoff. He bobbled it. It, it was not a clean pitch. And, um, you know, Gibson finally did get a hand, hand, handle on it and uh, turned it up the field, got almost, well, got about four on it. It'll be second six. So now the Dragons with seven minutes left to go here in the first half trying to answer the White County score. They trail it uh, now by a score seven to nothing. He'll handle out fake it uh, the pass and have to give him Gibson going to slip and fall after he gets about a yard. Gary he just got on the other side of the 50. Yeah, not even a yard on that one, Gary, but, uh, you know, just did slip and fall. Maybe could have got a couple out of that. Uh, you know, White County had a couple of defenders off the right side there, but he could have he got at least a couple more yards. I like to call that a line tackle. That's one yeah. of those where the line jumps up and grabs you. 6.23 left to go here in the third quarter. York in the shotgun. They'll get back to uh, Durham. Durham going to roll out. Durham's going to throw it. He's got a man wide open. They get the 30 all the way down to, or at the 40, all the way down to the 37-yard line. And uh, that was uh, number 15, Caden Stover, the freshman, Gary. 
Yeah, he just rolled out in the flat, Gary, and was wide open. Durham being uh, chased heavily and uh, got it off, got it to him, a good throw. And uh, Stover, that could have been a horse collar, collar tackle at the end there as well. And, uh, you know, a good game by Caden, though, down to the um, White County 37-yard line. And we ain't going to get many calls, so you don't have to worry about that. Now they're going to hand it off to uh, Cooper. Cooper trying to get outside. Bounces up uh, to about the 35-yard line. Yeah, he got a couple out of that. You know, Ben's strength's not running outside, and they've, out of this new formation, they've about tried to bounce him out a couple of times, and uh, his strength is running it right between the, you know, either th between the guard in the center or the guard in the tackle, and as long as the defense is not uh, shooting all the gaps, he's been effective doing that. Caden, the Stover comes out now, and then will come Johan West to get the snap. They're going to fake the handoff this time. They give it to uh, the Castellan. Castellan. He gets up. Uh, Gary about the line of scrimmage is all he got. He may have got back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. Yeah, that that was not a well-developed play. That was bobbled also, Gary. And, um, you know, the original handoff went, um, you know, that was another one of those double handoffs. And um, just not a whole lot of rain room on that one. That's one of those things, Gary, that uh, with this new uh, this new look offense, that's one of those things that takes a little time to get used to. That's something something can pick up in in a week, Harley, and that's what they've had to do here. Now they got a man in motion. They'll fake it to Castle on rolling out. Durham Durham's going to launch one out there. He's got Johan West at the ten. Johan to the three yard line, and he's going to be drugged down right at the five, making the five yard line. But Johan Gary was wide open and a great throw by Jonah. Flag on the play. It'll be holding York. So oh. that one's coming back. And, uh, you know, that was a good throw. And uh, Johan West broke wide open. He was, he was, there was nobody within 12 yards of him when that ball was in the air. And uh, kind of hung up there a little bit or he scores easily. But uh, York called for holding. So that's coming back 10 more yards. And it's going to be, um, you know, depending on where the hole was at, it's uh, it's going to be third and long distance. Yeah, it's going to be third and about Allard. <laughs> Actually, they're going to back it all the way up to the 48-yard line. So. And you got to get all the way down to the about the 28. So you're about yeah, 20 yards away yeah, it's now. It's 19, third and 19. As they'll take a snap, hand it off to Cooper, and now it's going to be even third and longer because that one uh, nobody – uh, was fooled by that one, Gary, as they drop him all the way back to about the uh, 48 of White County. Yeah, that'll be a loss of five and loss of six. They were making it to 47, so um, a loss of six on that play, and uh, York, fourth and 26, going to kick this one away. So it will be Castle on back. York had a great pass play, called back on the hold, and now the Dragons going to have to give it right back to the Warriors. He's yeah. on top seven, another one, four minutes to go in the quarter. DJ Paul is the kick returner for White County here, and he's going to let that bounce. And it comes right to him, though. He gets a good fortuitous bounce. He gets away from one, gets away from another. Got a flag on the play, so this one's coming back. That's going to be a block in the back right about the 30-yard line, and so that's going to back him up, Gary. They're going to be right at the shadow of their goal line. Yeah, it's going to put them way back, and I don't know if the referee sees that the flag's been thrown. Yeah, now he sees it. He's coming over, but this is a block in the back, I'm pretty sure, like you said, and uh, this should probably come back. Uh, you know, the flag's thrown at the 33-yard line. We'll see where the penalty actually happened. Uh, they're calling holding on that, not so blocking holding. the back. So, um once again, depends on where the holding took place. Well, the holding took place up here at the 33. They'll mark it off from the end of the run, am I right? They'll mark it off from there, but I, they actually, I, they're marking it way back. The holding actually, I, and I thought it happened between the 20 and 30-yard line. This is going to be right at about the 12-yard line, 13-yard line maybe. I think so. It's on the far actually, side of the Actually, they're field. saying the 15. Yeah, I started so. saying it looks closer to the 15-yard line, so. We'll say it's on the 15, so first and 10 now for the Warriors. 346 left to go in the first half. It's a 7 nothing a your, or White County lead in this one. The Dragons uh, need to stiffen here and keep this uh, field flipped. York moved the ball, had a great pass down to Johan West, called back on the hole. And he'll be 
This time on the keeper, the quarterback on the keeper, and he's through the uh, first line, and he'll get up about 13 yards for a first down. Yeah, that should have been stopped in the backfield. Uh, I believe it was Evan Tompkins had him, and uh, he was able to get away from him, couldn't wrap him up, Gary, and uh, that was ends up being a first down run. Three and a half minutes left to go here in his first half, Gary. White County, uh, they're just running the clock out down. They can – Take his down, and if they can score here and go in halftime, they'll have a tremendous amount of momentum. York, of course, will get the ball to start the second half, so we'll see how that affects him. And now the quick out over to the big number 40. He's got the ball. He breaks one tackle. Yoan West, good tackle by West at the 34-yard line. That was a good tackle. That was a nice job. Um, Zach Gibson came in and missed, and, uh, you know, York, a couple of guys not wrapping up tonight, and, uh, you know, Zach didn't wrap him up on that play and allowed him to get positive yardage. They could have held him to zero or a negative gain even. So now it's going to be second and six for the Warriors as Leftwich will bring his squad up. 2.50 left to go here in the first half. Leftwich takes the snap. He's going to quick out this one. The guy cannot handle it. He's going to take it over here to number four, D.J. Paul. But DJ uh, dropped that one. He gets, it was a good pass. It's just low. It was a low pass, but he got both hands on it. Just dropped it, Gary. And um, you know, if you're going to throw that ball, that was a timing route. He did. The ball was out of the quarterback's hand before he turned around. So you got to hit him in the numbers if it's a timing route like that. So now it's going to be third and long for the Warriors. Third and six. York would like to get this ball back here and take one more crack at it before halftime. 2.43 left, which gets the snap, drops back. He's going to look deep. He's throwing it out there. Got a man out there, but overthrew him. Looking for big number 40, and uh, he was one uh, hole there, Gary. He said he was healed as Cade Clark just uh, was about three steps short on that one. Yeah, Tom, Toman. Tom, uh, that is Thoman on the coverage there. Did a good job by him, but that ball overthrown, Gary, and it'll be fourth and six, and um, looks like they're bringing the punter on. Why well, can't he go punt it away and drop him back uh, for the Dragons? He is number 30, White Hawks, and... Uh, That's Durham. Durham on the far side. As they'll try that rugby punt again, that's another just straight up in the air. York needs to watch out. It bounces off a Warrior player. And it's picked up, uh, and it'll be spotted where it hit the Warrior player in the helmet, Gary. And their punter, not going to be up for any Ray Guy awards in the next few years. <laughs> He's got a great leg. We've seen him kick some long field goals in warm-ups, but punting, is, seems he's struggling at that. He got that one high enough. You could have shot some satellite waves off that one, but it just came down right about the 43 for York. That's a great field position with 2.28 to go here in the first half. Gary York needs a big play, a big run, something here to get some momentum going, move the ball down the field. Low snap. They're going to hand it off to Gibson, and Gibson bangs straight ahead to the 40 or 45-yard line. Pick up of about two, and Gary, with the under two minutes to go, that's not going to do it. No, it's not. You know, the clock running here, and, uh, you know, Durham come over at sideline and get the play, so the, here they come. I'm trying to play a little quicker here. You know, you got to be careful. You really don't want to give White County the ball back either here with much time. And the snap rolling is Durham. Durham's got a man out there wide open, but way over through to Toman on that one is Gary. Toman was wide open, but uh, that was just overthrown by Durham. Yeah, he overshot him on that one, you know, uh, he is rolling out right, and Toman running a little, you know, slot play out to the right towards the sideline there, and they just couldn't connect on that one. And York needs to get a first down here, Gary. Like you said, you don't want to give them the ball back, even with just 156 left to go in the quarter, because uh, Leftwich can throw the ball. It'll be back in the shotgun goes Durham. Snap, Durham's going to roll out. Now he throws it back to uh, Gibson on the far side, and that one went nowhere. Gary, that one lost about about five yards. They have seven white jerseys back here, Gary. There's no way that play is going to be successful. And, um, you know, they, they didn't have it red, but um, they had so much pursuit that when Durham threw the ball back across the field to Gibson, Gibson had nowhere to run with it. So now it's going to be fourth down and a dozen for the Dragons. You about have to punt it here, Gary, and keep. Yeah, uh, yeah and White him. County took time out as well to stop the clock. So timeout on the field. It's seven nothing. White County with a buck forty-six to play. 
Whether you're competing on the athletic field or working hard in the classroom, remember you have the support of First Volunteer Bank, the bank with personality. We're behind you 100% of the way. Good luck to all the area teams. Play tough and play fair. And remember, when it comes to helping you with your banking needs, we're First Volunteer Bank, the bank with personality. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. And now over. Okay. Uh, now the uh, Dragons got to punt it away. You've got to have a, a big uh, stop here. The Dragons need to uh, make it, make sure they uh, get this punt. Uh, ta whoever receives it, tackle. Yeah, they do. You know, you got to get Castellon's kicked the ball well, so you know he's got to get a good kick off here, and then they have got to get uh, Malachi Dow, the kick returner, down. And this one not going to be a great punt by Castellon. He had a big rush, but he takes a big drag and bounce. So uh, we'll take it as it rolls all the way down to the 20-yard line, Gary. That one, uh, York uh, had a... Uh, they're going to check this. I thought he might have hit the foot of a York player, but they're saying no, and that'll get called all the way back to the 20-yard line. And um, Castellon, that was a heavy rush. He had three guys coming at him, had to kick that ball high to get it out, and... Um, uh, you know, got a good bounce because of the high kick, and it uh, rolls down to the 20-yard line. Uh, you know, that's a 35-yard punt. I think you'll take that. Oh, yeah, you'll take that roll every time. As uh, now with a buck 34 left to go in the quarter, it is Wye County with the ball and a seven-point lead. We'll see what Leftwich does. He's at his own 20-yard line. He's got 80 yards to go for pay dirt, and, uh, of course, they do have a good kicker, so we'll see now. As they'll throw on the first one, they've got it down, but good tackle by the Dragons right there, Gary, to stop it. Yeah, that was Eli Kirby again, number 35, and nice play by him. He he was there in pursuit and uh, held him to a short game. So now it's uh, 117. They're, going, they're not going to take a timeout. They're going to rush up and left, which takes snap. He's going to throw it out. Got a man out there, but it's going to be incomplete. That was Cheek on the route, and he just missed him. A good coverage out there by Isaiah Strong, and... Uh, you know, York got them third and four here, so see what happens. 70 seconds left to go here in the quarter. Halftime coming up here in just a moment. We'll be at halftime of this one. Our halftime stats going to be brought to you by Old Ben Franklin Forward. And now they're going to throw one out. Got the big man out there. They're hitting big number 40, and he's going to have the first down, the 35. And uh, that'll stop the clock for two for him to, to uh, bring the chains up, Gary, but uh, that's not going to get you down the field. No, Kay Clark on the catch, the big tight end. A good job by Ben Cooper trying to strip the ball to get him down. And now back goes uh, Leftwich. Leftwich going to air one out. He's got a man running down there, but nowhere close as he way overthrew Tony Lewis. Actually, the guy closest to that was Wyatt Hawks, and he uh, he they had that double cover between him and Toman and um no good coverage by York. As he would try to go for pay dirt on that one. So now it's going to be second and 10 for the Warriors. 51.2 seconds left to go here in the first half of play. 7 nothing, White County. Now Leftwich stepping up. Leftwich gets away from the uh, – there's one out. York's got some player back. Picked off. Taken away by Toman. Toman's got some blockers. Toman's coming up the side. And, ooh, he gets leveled at the 35-yard line as a Warrior come up, Gary, and put the wood to Toman. Yeah, that was a that was a hit to the head. You know, I'm surprised. I thought that might get a penalty, but uh, no flag. But still a great – play by Toman, you can see him sizing it up, Gary, and he um, fought, you know, the, the the offensive player come back, tried to challenge him for it, but he was able to fight him off, make the interception, and then got about 10 yards on the return. Um, you know, York having trouble getting a pass rush, and that really showed there is left with able to sidestep the rush and then step up in the pocket and make that long throw. And now the snap going to be handed off uh, for York. And going up the middle is Castellon for an 11-yard gain. And York has one timeout, Gary. Uh, do they call it here? Um, they're setting the chain, so we'll see what happens. Uh, they're in the huddle. Now, they're actually, they actually started the clock before the chains were set. And now York's taking forever to get up to the line, Gary. And uh, they're not going to get but one playoff, probably. No, this will be – this is probably going to be it. So, um 
They'll throw a quick route over here to Caden Stover. Stover up over midfield. He's going to be run out of bounds as that's at about the 45-yard line. They'll have time for one more play, but Gary, uh, the clock actually stopped. I didn't think the clock was supposed to start until the uh, markers were set, but while they were carrying the markers up, the clock was actually running. Yeah, remember, the times kept our ref- official on the field here, so he um, started the clock, and... Uh, Started it running in uh, 6.1 seconds now. York at the 44-yard line. Um, uh, Jonah Durham over to get the play from Coach Darwin Wright. We'll see what, what happens here. York, um, one, maybe two plays here if they get something off quick. So it will be Durham back in the shotgun. Got a man in motion, fakes it to Castellon. He'll throw one out uh, over to the uh, right side. That one's going to be almost picked off uh, with .2 seconds left to go in the quarter. Uh, number 15 uh, for the Warriors, Garrett Nash, almost come over and made a big play on that one. He did. Um, you know, that ball slipped out of Durham's hand when he threw it, and that was a wobbling duck. It was a floater out there. Lucky he didn't get that picked off, um, you know, but uh, – York going to be able to run one more play here. We'll see what Coach Wright's got in the playbook. Of course, uh, the Dragons uh, got that interception moment ago left, which hung one up like a week old salami a minute ago, and then that one almost uh, just the same way for York as uh, it was hung up by Durham. Durham takes a snap now. Durham's going to roll. Durham's going to keep it. Durham's going to get up over the 40, and he's going to be run out of bounds. That's your first half. Half time of this one and at the half, it's the Y County Warriors 7, York nothing. Fentress Farmers Co-op, happy to be a proud sponsor of York Dragon Football. We wish you a winning season. Every game is a success when you have played your best. Fentress Farmers Co-op, bringing you quality products from feed, seed, and fertilize, to automotive, to animal health, and pet products, to gas, diesel, and propane, to clothing and boots for the family, and a gift shop. All this and much more at Fentress Farmers Co-op, 1219 Old Highway 127 South, Jamestown. Go Dragons! When it comes to watching sports, oh. there's no telling what you'll hear. No, 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 no! But when you order Pizza Hut for the game, you know exactly what you'll hear. What the? Oh, that looks fantastic. Your favorite pizza. Ooh. Those awesome wings. What? Plus sides and desserts. Yeah. All waiting at PizzaHut.com. So order now, because no one out pizzas the hut. Huh. What game? Product availability, prices, participation, delivery areas, and charges and minimum purchase required for delivery may vary. Delivery charges not a driver tip. These two musicians play the same instrument. One is a rock. The other is more romantic. They may sound nothing alike, but they're in total harmony when it comes to breakfast at McDonald's. Whether you play hot licks or can't play a lick, Together, we breakfast. Choose a new Buttermilk Crispy Chicken McGriddles, Buttermilk Crispy Chicken Biscuit, or Bacon Egg and Cheese Biscuit, and get any two for $4, only at McDonald's. Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Single item at regular price. Twin Lakes is building a fiber broadband network that gives you the connection you need to experience the gig difference. You deserve to stream without buffering, stay connected, or run a business with speed and reliability. With Twin Lakes Fiber Broadband, you'll have access to speeds up to 1 gig. That's 1,000 megabits per second. With fiber, you'll also have reliable voice solutions, robust TV services, and security and smart control systems for your home or business. Work fast. Play hard with fiber from Twin Lakes. Learn more by visiting us online at www.twinlakes.net. Some restrictions apply. Speed not available in all areas. The Gary Maxwell Insurance Office offering area insurance is located at 300 West Central Avenue in Jamestown. Get a free quote for your home, auto, life, or business with no obligation to buy. Call 879-1251. Shane Beatty, Katie Cooper, Tammy Robbins, and Brad Rains agents, along with Jeff Robbins' manager, will be happy to assist you. That's Gary Maxwell Insurance, located 300 West Central Avenue, with locations in Livingston, Cookville, and Gainesboro. Halftime of this one, and at the half, it is White County on top seven to nothing. And Gary, uh, a tough half for the Dragons offensively. Really, it is. You know, you look at the stats. Well, we'll take a look at the stats in a moment, yeah. but uh, uh, yeah. brought to you by Old Ben Frank Ford. I, we were uh, talking just a minute ago. Uh, you look at the uh, band out here, White County band. How many get, kids you guess they've got on their band, Gary? They've got about 100. Yeah. 
but you know, uh, looking at the game, if you look at the stats, you know, it's not one-sided either way. It's been a defensive struggle, and um, you know, um, York just can't get nothing to get going. Their biggest play is probably the last run of the first half. You know, got about 15, 16 yards. Um, other than that, uh, York not been able to get much going offensively in the first half. They had one great big play, but it was called back because of a penalty, and that was the pass to Johan West. But we're at halftime of this one. Time now for our OBM Franklin halftime stats. Brought to you by OBM Franklin's Ford. They're located over in Wartburg, folks. You know, Fords are cheaper in the country. Hello, everyone. This is Bruce Babb, GM of Oban Franklin Ford in Wattburg, Tennessee. We all know it's football time, and we would like to kick off the season with six reasons to purchase a vehicle from Oban Franklin Ford. One, interest rates are low. We have rates as low as 0%. Two, factory incentives on new vehicles are at an all-time high. Three, we have a great selection of new and pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs. Four, we say yes when others say no. Five, the highest amount is given for your trade. Six, great service after the sale. And now for the extra point, let's go for two. Buy any new car, truck, or SUV and receive two years worth of free maintenance. Let us show you why our customer satisfaction is in the top 2%. Call or visit us today, 1877 New Ford. Visit us online at oldbenfranklinford.com. Folks, remember, Fords are cheaper out in the country. Here at York Institute, we're at halftime of this one. And, Gary, uh, now take a look at our stats from this first half. Yeah, sure. You know, the big thing, you score 7 nothing. White County. Uh, first downs in the first half. York got five. Uh, rushing 23 carries for 50 yards. They're three of seven through the air for 20 yards. 30 total plays for 70 yards. For White County, 13 carries, 62 yards. They're 9 of 15 through the air for 48 yards and one interception. And one touchdown as well, and they've run twenty only twenty eight offensive plays for one hundred and ten yards. You know, um, you look at it. The big thing I think tonight, you know, we've only had four penalties in the first half. We've had most of our games this year's had eight or nine penalties in the first half. So penalties down, time of possession's about even, and um, you know, uh, York uh, couldn't cash in in their red zone chance. Um, White County did, and so seven to nothing. Uh, individually in the first half for York Russian, it's Nathaniel Castellan, seven carries, 35 yards. Ben Cooper, eight carries for 14. Zach Gibson, three carries for six. And Jonah Durham, five carries for minus five. Passing, it's Durham, three of seven through the air, 20 yards. Caden Stover's caught two for 23 yards, and Sawyer Gunner caught one for minus three. For White County, Cedric Leftwich is their leading rusher. Two carries, 19 yards. Malachi Dow, three for 18. Jaden Richmond, five for 18. And Will Griggs, three times, seven yards. Leftwich, nine of 15 through the air for 48 yards and a touchdown and the interception. He has um, completed four to Nathan McAllister for 27 yards and a touchdown. Kay Clark's caught three for 15. DJ Paul, one for five. And Will Griggs, one for one. The leading tacklers for York in the first half, Isaiah Strong with five. Eli Kirby with four. Evan Tompkins with three. Hunter Pope and Will Griggs with six apiece lead White County. And it's seven to nothing at halftime. And, of course, Gary York will get the ball to start the second half. One score to pass along to you at the half. In a battle of top ten teams, Upperman leads Oneida seven to nothing. So they got a war going on there as well. They got one's over at Oneida, but Upperman's in a good battle as well tonight. And for York Gary, it, they had the opportunity. They got that early turnover by White County. Had it down inside the ten yard line. Had it down to the one at one point. Couldn't punch it in. White County gets a turnover at the eleven yard line. They take it in and score. Yeah, they do. And um, you know. York did have a – it was a great opportunity, too. It was on the first play of the game. They got the fumble, and, um, you know, we're in great position. The first and gold, and just, uh, you know, guy first and gold, and guy down to the one, like you said, just couldn't push it in, went for it on fourth down, didn't make it. And, um, you know, so um, York, uh, you know, we played the whole first quarter in on York's side of the field, you know, in White County territory. So, um 
it was it was great and uh, you know your cat chances just couldn't capitalize on them and you like you said they get the second half kickoff they've got to do something with that gary they need to move that ball down the field and uh you know hopefully pitch punch that in for a touchdown but it's imperative that york gets something going on the offensive offensive side of the ball and just uh, quite honestly gary york has struggled in the second half of ball games this year they have you know and a lot of that is their death and some of their injuries and having to play people at different positions we heard coach Trout talk about that last week but um you know really they're it, they it's about not having enough death getting tired and uh, you know they the snaps are pretty even that time possession's pretty even um you know where york is uh kindly um lost games is that they've been on the field defensively much more in the second half of games that's why another reason it's so important that the offense come out and get something going to start the second half and when you're playing both ways it's uh it's still a whole lot of uh, playing time for every one of these kids well we're at halftime of this one our halftime stats brought to you by old ben franklin forward for cheaper in the country right now though Half of White County's out on the field. <laughs> they're banned. Uh, they're a band of many, many, I guess you could say, Warriors, as they have one of the largest high school bands I've seen around. Gary, they do, and they're good too. And um, I, you know, they they are uh, doing a good performance here at halftime at homecoming. Um, I'm sure the York fans want them to get off the field. I think you know we'll have some York. York a uh, York halftime show. We've already had the cheerleaders, so I expect that we'll have some others before halftime's over with. Here. I think I think York's noteworthy is going to be singing here in a few minutes, and uh, the noteworthy of uh, days gone by as well. I reckon all the. Uh, uh, members, uh, former members of Noteworthy are going to be here, a lot of them, uh, to uh, perform here at halftime. But we're at halftime of this one. We're going to take a timeout because we've got quite a while before second half gets back underway. And we'll be back with the second half in a few minutes.
And back here at York Institute, we're getting ready for the second half to get underway, Gary. And uh, they they got this one out quick. The official just jumped out and said, get out on the field, guys. We're going to play. Yeah, I think they're trying to beat some weather in here maybe. So, um, you know, we looked at the radar. It looks like there's one cell close. But after that, it kind of clears up. Um, yep. We really don't want that lightning to get close enough that they would uh, call call stop the play because that, that's going to halt us for at least a half hour plus yeah. warm-up time. At least, so uh, we'll be kicking it away for the uh, Warriors. Will be Will Cheek as Cheek will put his foot into it, and back for the Dragons is Stover, and uh, this one's going toward uh, get or toward uh, looks like Cooper. Cooper going to take that at the uh, about 13, gets up to the 26. That's why Hawks, Hawks on the return. Yeah, he gets it out to about the 27 yard line. Uh, you know, that ball not kicked a little short. They're kicking it away from Stover. Yeah. Of course, Stover with the uh, kickoff return for a touchdown last week. So they're keeping it away from the freshman as now York will come up. Gary, you mentioned this earlier. York really needs a sustained drive and some points on this first one and get some kind of momentum going their way. They had that momentum to start the game, but lost it real quick when they lost the ball on downs. Yeah, they did. You know, it's imperative. York gets something going offensively here, and, uh, you know, they're going to come out. I'm sure they're going to bring the whole playbook. And this time it's uh, handed off over the left side to Castellon, I believe, and he got maybe a yard as uh, York went back to the traditional wing tee on this first play. Yeah, they did. Uh, you know, not much running there and no gain, actually. So it'll be second and 10 from the 27. Uh, Tough sledding for Nathaniel coming off the uh, right off the right wing. So York now will have its second, and uh, they didn't get any. They say it's going to be second and ten for the Dragons. 
Georgia's got to find some way to uh, get some yardage. They're really struggling here at this point. As they got a man in motion, they're going to hand off to Gibson over the right side, and Gibson's going nowhere either. Gary, you know, why can't he starting to bring everybody up in the box? Yeah, they are. You know, they, they've got nine men up there at the snap, Gary, and, uh, you know, just no running room for Gibson. Gibson Geit, they tried to set the blocks, but there's more more white shirts there than York can block, and, you know, and there's just no running room, so... Uh, maybe give him a half a yard on that one. So um, it's third and long for York. And I think York's going to take a timeout. Already taking a timeout here in the third quarter. We got 10.43 to go here in the third, and it's a 7 nothing White County lead back after this. Lefty's going to keep it. It's going to be. He gets away from one tackle. Lefty's still running. Cuts back up. Lefty's still on his feet. Lefty's still on his feet. He's down the sideline. He's headed for pay dirt. Touchdown, Dragons! Hello, everyone. This is John Robbins on behalf of State Representative John Mark Wendell wishing the York Dragons many touchdowns and many wins during the football season. John Mark is happy to be a sponsor of the play-by-play -play broadcast and hopes that you enjoy each and every game. Again, on behalf of Representative John Mark Wendell, this is John Robbins and saying, best of luck, Dragons. And we're getting back to get underway again, Gary, and we're seeing some flashes of lightning off to the north of us. Let's hopefully that system's moving away from us as it will be Durham back in the shotgun. He fakes the handoff. He's going to drop back, going to throw it out there. Got a man out there, batted away. Great play there by number six. That was Malachi Dow getting up and just batting that in the way, Gary. He, they had coverage out there. They had two men covering that, Gary, but Dow actually came out, out of his shorter position and ran about 20 yards to get his hand on that ball. And McDowell, a freshman, or Dow, a freshman, he's showing a lot of promise. And York will have to punt it away as Castellon steps back to about the 15-yard line. So one, two, three kick. York does the football can can here. And it will be a snap back to Castellon. He gets the punt off. He gets a boomer. That one's going to hang and going to hit. But it takes a warrior bounce all the way back into warrior territory, Gary. But they're going to down it. They're going to say it's uh, – well, they gave York a real good spot on that one because <laughs> it actually hit somebody at about the 48 of your – or a 48 of York side. Yeah, they're marking that at the 49, well, right at midfield here. Um, so it's on the white – it's on the um, White County side of the field right now, but um, York, uh, three and out, Gary, you know, they really need to get something going there, and uh, instead, three three downs and a pun, and uh, White County going to take over in good field position. So the Warriors will come up. Warriors coming in this game three and two on the year. This after a uh, having the state's longest losing streak uh, before this season began. Coming up, number 20 makes a great cut inside. He's headed outside. He's got some running room. Still on his feet all the way down to the 28-yard line. And, Gary, that was just some good running there by the Warriors back. Yeah, it was. That was Will Griggs on the carry. And uh, there were three York jerseys in the backfield, Gary, and he, he ran right between all three of them. When he did, he had a lot of running room. That goes for about 23 yards. So it's going to be first and 10 of York's 28-yard line. And uh, it'll be a snap back. They're going to hand it off to Griggs again. This time Griggs is going to be bottled and stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Good day by the Dragons on that one, Gary. Yeah, that was um, Johan West and Edward Stockton on stop, Gary. And uh, they that's a loss of about one, maybe two there. And Bob uh, sending me some information on the uh, radar. It's uh, to the north of us moving northeast, so it's moving away from us. Good. That's that's good news. Appreciate that, Bob, as uh, it will be uh, now second and a loss of two, a dozen for the Warriors. They'll give it. Now it'll be the keeper by the quarterback. He's going to come up through the middle and they get to about the 26-yard line. And, Gary, he's going to get back about five of what they uh, – or about five yards and uh, – Gets back to about, what, uh, the 26 is where they're going to mark it? Yeah, the 26 uh, gain of about four on that one, but it's going to be third and eight. So, um, you know, this is 
a passing down for them here, Gary, and uh, they've converted this sometime you know, some of their opportunities tonight, and, uh, you know, they're three of six on third down, so we'll see what they do with this one. And this will be a great opportunity for York to come up with a big defensive play. Uh, it would be nice to get maybe a defensive score. They've been able to move the football. Maybe a defensive score is what York needs as the snap back to uh, the quarterback. Big rush. He's going to dump off the little screen. It's going to be behind the receiver. That's going to bring up a fourth down, and you're in four-down territory here for the Warriors. I don't see him kicking a field goal from here. It would be about what? Oh, I'd say about a 45-yarder. 40, 43 yards, and... Um... You know, their kicker's got the leg, and uh, but this is really, you know, he's in right now too, Gary, so he's got his marker. It looks yeah, like he, they're going to try. Like they're going to line up for this uh, officially, it looks like 42 yards here. So he's going to try a 42-yarder, and it is uh, back to kick Cheek. The snap is down, the kick is up, the kick is way off the mark. That one, uh, he hooked that one, Gary. I'm not sure that might have been touched. It wouldn't or deflected. It wouldn't block, but uh, per se. But uh, I think you know maybe York got a good rush on it. Got good pressure up the middle, and um, that might have been deflected ever so slightly. But um, it wasn't close either way. It looked like it was going left. So you, a good standby York here after giving up the big play on first down you know, to start the drive, and uh, York will take over. That looked like one of my golf shots right there. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's when you don't get the face. Uh, the, the club, you turn the face a little too much. Yeah, and yes, indeed. <laughs> now it's going to be first and 10 for the Dragons at their own 20 as Durham going to roll out. Durham's looking to throw. He's got a man out there, but that one's up for grabs. Great play by Tolman. He tips it up to himself, takes it all the way into Dragon territory to the 36-yard line, and a great play by Tolman, Gary. He went up and just tipped that one to himself. Yeah, you know, Matt. It was Malachi Dow, who's about six inches shorter than Toman uh, in coverage there. And they were battling for position in the ball. And uh, Toman just tipped it up over him and to himself and got another about 15 yards out of that. And it's first and 10 from the White County 36, a big play, what York needed. And Toman, uh, we were talking to his dad today. He was up you know, by us at the parade. And he was talking about he was hoping that he'd have a big game tonight. That was a big play there. And now Durham on the keeper. And Durham gets about three, and Gary Durham's having a tough sled out there running the ball tonight. Yeah, had a little bit of a hole, tried to get through it. It closed quickly. Uh, number eight, Hunter Pope in there to uh, make the tackle and uh, gain. Uh, uh, they're giving him about three yards. It'll be second and seven. So now the Dragons uh, need to keep this drive alive. Uh, great play by Toman to come up with that reception. Toman went up and tipped it to himself. As they're going to hand it out this time over to Big Ben, and Big Ben's going to bang to the 30. He's going to be short of the first down, but, Gary, he almost got stopped in the backfield, so that's good running by Big Ben. It was a gain of three. It'll be third and four, a big third down for the Dragons here. They're, they're, they're on the move, Gary. I you know um, you, you guess if you're coach right and you got a good, th you know, you got a play that you really liked and you worked on all week, this may be the time to bring it in, you know, and uh, watch you, something you you want to get four yards here. You want to get first down and keep this moving. Of course, this is four down territory for the Dragons. You won't see them try a field goal from this distance as they're going to hand it off up the middle, and that one's uh, going to be Castellon. Castellon ahead to the 24-yard line, going to have it first and 10 Dragons. A nice play. That handoff went to Gibson, one of those double handoffs again, and Castellon coming around the left corner uh, had a little sailing there and got about six yards. It'll be well, got five, first and ten from the 25. York on the move now. York uh, trying to answer White County's score in that first half. It's six and a half minutes left to go here in the third quarter. Seven nothing White County, but the Dragons on the move. As a snap, going to be handed off this time uh, to uh, Gibson. And Gibson going over that right side, pushes it about to the 20-yard line. Gary, good gain on first down. Yeah, they're going to mark this about the 19, I think, Gary. So it's going to be a gain of about six. And uh, running off the traditional right side behind Talent and Stockton that time, uh, you know, the offensive line's done a good job. Even that left side over there on that last, the previous play, Landon Martin and uh, 
Will Helby gun. Good job over there on that left side to get the first down for the Dragons. So now it's going to be second and about five for the Dragons as they take a snap. It'll be Durham on the keeper, and Durham's going to get drugged down behind the line of scrimmage, Gary, and that, is, that play has not worked all night. It hasn't, you know. It, it, you got to, if you're a quarterback, you have to keep the ball, though, Gary, because you got to keep the defense somewhat honest. But, you know, um, the holes are closing up quick, and, uh, you know, uh, Jonah got to learn to make a couple of quick first steps to crash through the line, and uh, it's another big third down for the Dragons, third and six this time. And the Dragons right now just in uh, – Inside the red zone, they're right at the 20 yard line. And they'll spread out this time and uh, got uh, Gibson over on the right side as Durham's going to roll to his right. Durham looking for somebody. Throws out, almost picked off as he was looking for Gibson. And Gary, number four, stepped in front of that one and he had had a whole lot of real estate ahead of him, DJ Paul, if he did pick that one off. That was actually intended for Johan West. It was just a little rollout play, but there were four white jerseys there, Gary, and uh, that was probably an ill-advised pass. And, uh, you know, uh, Jonah you know, probably would have been better served to throw that one somewhere else. So now it's going to be fourth down and about five, and the Dragons needing a first down here. The Dragons, Gary, have moved the ball, but have stalled. Every time they move the ball, they get down into uh, Warrior territory. They've stalled out, and now they've got a fourth and five here. Durham rolled out. He's going to chuck one toward the end zone. Got a man out there. Did Tolman come down with it? He did. Tolman for the touchdown. touchdown, Dragons! What a play. Nice play. Once again, he went and battled for that ball and won, Gary, and uh, you know, managed to get inside the pylon for the touchdown. And that is the size advantage of Tolman, Gary. He's got that size, and he just went up, and uh, that was kind of almost a wounded duck again, like you said earlier. But he was able to go up, man, the basketball that one down. Yeah, I mean, he's got a big height advantage over there, and a nice play by him to, you know, fight for that ball and win that battle. Johan to tie it up now. The snap is low. The kick is up. The kick is good. We are tied 7 all with 449 to go in the third. Philip Hall, owner of Hall Family Pharmacy in Jamestown and Clark Range, invites you to the new Hall Sports and Outdoors, now open in downtown Jamestown. Hall Sports and Outdoors carries top quality sporting equipment and accessories from top names like Costa, Timberland, and more. Stop in at the new Hall Sports and Outdoors for everything you need for the woods and field. Jamestown has a new sporting goods store, Hall Sports and Outdoors, at the corner of South Main Street and Livingston Avenue across from the historic courthouse in Jamestown. And, Gary, right now, uh, York uh, comes back and scores uh, mostly on the big plays by Toman. Yeah, a couple of great plays by Toman, including the 20-yard touchdown there, Gary. Um, Durham just threw that ball up high in the corner of the end, you know, towards the corner of the pylon, and Toman uh, battling number six, Malachi Dow again. Probably has a good six inches on him and uh, was able to go up over and catch that ball and get down inside the pylon for the touchdown. And now the Dragons going to kick it away, and the Dragons uh, with a kind of a unique line up here as they're going to kick this one, and that one's going to be over uh, to the left side. That one's going to hit and take a Dragon bounce, but it rolls out of bounds for a penalty. Yeah, that wasn't a bad kick. It just uh, kicked left when it hit the ground, Gary. You know, this if you've not been to this field out here, it's got a big, heavy crown in the middle of it, and everything kind of falls off of that. It's to help retire, you know, help shed water, but... Um, that worked to York's disadvantage. So now the uh, Warriors will get the ball and Gary. They'll get pretty good field position after the penalty. Yeah, they will. This will move it out to the chip. Move it out to the 40. Or actually, they may make them re-kick here. I'm not sure. Okay, they're going to take the penalty and make them re-kick. Yeah. So York going to have to line up and do this again. And Gary, sometimes that's an advantage for the receiving team because you just you you're. Uh, special teams have just ran down the field, and uh, they might be a little bit tired for this second kick. They may be, you know, and uh, you, know, you see the White County return men, number four, D.J. Paul, number six, Malachi Dow, they're all the way up at the 20-yard line now, Gary. And right now, the York needs a, a big kick from uh, Caden. 
Yeah, you back us up five yards, kick it from the 35. So um, he's got to get some foot in this one. Caden Stover to kick this one away. The freshman. And York now tied with Y County 7-7. We got 449 to go in third. He's going to hit a line drive. That one's going to take a big hop, and they have misplayed by the back man. Picked up a number six, and he's going to be hit. Gets away from one tack, gets away from another. Then he's going to be dropped like a bad habit at the 10-yard line. Uh, good job by the Dragons on the re on the kickoff uh, coverage, Gary. It was. You know, a couple of guys held him up enough, and Toman. That guy again comes in, cleans it up, and Gary, um, they're going to start. It looks like from the inside the 10 yard line. So um, York got them pinned back here, and the turnover would be great right now. That's true. Even if they can hold them and get them to punt uh, from here, York would flip the field definitely on the Warriors. So this is a big uh, series for the Warriors with 444 to go here in the third quarter. It will be dropping back in the shotgun Leftwich. Leftwich. Taking the snap. Going to hand it off uh, to uh, number 20 on the outside. And we got a flag on the play, and I think we're going to have a hold on that one, Gary. That's going to back them up even deeper. Yeah, that's going to be a hold, and that's going to go. I can't see the number. He's turned sideways to me. Number 51. Um, they clearly tried to seal the corner and had a, a hold, and um, they're going to decline that, actually, because that was for no gain, it don't look like. Yeah. So it's going to be a second and ten now for the Warriors deep in their own territory. And good pursuit that time by the Dragons. Even uh, with the hole, they couldn't get any yardage. Well, you had Isaiah Strong and you had a linebacker. I'm not sure who it was out there. You know, that was the two men. And if he gets by them, he had a lot of running room. But So it's a good job by those guys. So now Leftwich comes up with a second and ten. Takes the snap, hands it off up the middle, and pushing the pile forward is uh, number Griggs. 20. That's Griggs again. Yeah, Griggs, and that's going to get about three, it looks like, Gary. So it'll be third and seven, a big third down here. And, uh, you know, um, York, uh, you know, that was a half-the-distance penalty. So it may have been a good move by them to uh, decline the penalty. It would have... Uh, only been about it within about a seven yard penalty from the 14 so it only backed them up about three yards so uh, you know smart move by york here let's see if it pays off so now it's going to be third and long for the warriors as left which calling out the play in the shotgun he's got uh, looks like a griggs beside him and he takes the snap rolling rolling york trying to get some pressure now he's going to throw it out got it deep and gonna be incomplete great play by the dragons defensive player almost picked off there gary uh, by uh looks like it was durham almost had the interception probably should have had that interception the offensive guy come back and battled him for it a little bit but he was set up to make the interception there just uh, you know it was ham fighting couldn't hardly get it but big play by york and this is a punting situation and now the warriors and the warriors haven't had the best not punting the ball gary <laughs> no they haven't and york's way back here i would pull my returners up a little i'd yeah. get about the about the 45 yard line at best and now that one that one's going to be hit, and that one's going to be – that one actually got to good, gets a good one, but it gets a great big roll, and York's going to have to just let it be rolled all the way down to the 27-yard line. Gary, that's a, a – for York, that was about a 20-yard uh, mistake right there. That was a miscommunication between Hawks and Durham. Um, uh, Hawks – I think Durham thought Hawks was going to catch it, and – Hawks thought Durham was going to catch it, so Hawks actually left the ball and went to make a block, and Durham watched it go by, and uh, it rolls 23 more yards down to the 27-yard line. That's definitely a, a field changer right there with 3.28 left to go here in the third quarter in a tie ball game, 7-7. Seven, seven. And as we said, uh, Gary, it also actually looked like Hawks was coming over to talk to the coaches that one was kicked and then had to come back and uh, – we're going to re-kick. We missed a penalty, apparently, okay, yeah. Gary. So, um, looks like we're re-kicking this one. So, uh, that's going to back them up, and it's going to be false start. Uh, that The Dragons get a great big break on that one, Gary. And I 
I'm just going to say I'm going to put Stover back here. I'd like to see Stover back here in this punt situation back here. I thought they were going to put him back here, but uh, it's still, you know, Hawks and Durham have done a decent job the past couple of weeks fielding punts. Uh, you got to clean, you know, this is a tight ball game. No chance make mental errors here. You've got to clean, got to field this ball cleanly. You can't let your roll 25 yards. And the Warriors are going to have to pump this one back from inside their end zone, so uh, they got to get a good one off here. That was the best kick of the night by the Warriors as that little rugby punt. That one's going to be another straight up in the air and that one's going to hit and die right the 20 yard line. York dived on, dove on it uh, Gary. I'm not sure what uh, Hawks was thinking. He remember and dove on that. If he hadn't come up that ball why yeah. County could have got it back because they were all around it. Yeah, there were a couple players there, but uh, Hawks uh, dove on it, tried to get a couple extra yards and succeeded at doing that. He moved it down to the 19 looks like but um you know another poor punt by white county after a great punt on that first one and uh, york uh, gains about 54 yards in field position on this punt you that, know? Was, that was uh, a damn good field changer they're they're getting the breaks gary got to cash this one in too you did the last time let's see if you can do it again get up get the lead on the scoreboard put some pressure on them from having to play from behind yeah they didn't get the uh the earlier one, at the start of the ball game, they got that uh, fumble and couldn't convert on. Now York uh, needing to convert here as they'll uh, take it right in the middle, and that is, I believe, uh, Durham. back Durham on the keeper. And Durham's taking a lot of punishment on that, Gary. Yeah, I mean, uh, he's got a little bit of a running lane. It seems to be closing very quickly, and um, so it um, – you know, he gets a couple on that, it looks like. Actually, got a little more than a couple. He got about four. Actually, they're, they're showing only one on, on the far side where they're marking, yeah, and they're so saying it, second and nine. So that was actually on the 14, not the 19. So, uh, you know, we gain of one, it'll be second and nine. So the Dragons uh, needing to get down to about the four-yard line. And a quick slant. There's a great catch there by the Dragons. Uh, did he? He short. Short of the goal line, uh, he just got uh, that caught. That was Johan West on the slant route, I believe, and a great catch by him. Yeah, Johan with the catch. No, actually, I believe that was Stover. Yeah, that was it? Stover, yeah. So the freshman with a big catch. Uh, didn't see it down there. I couldn't see you. I was blocked from uh, seeing who caught it. But I believe that was Stover on the catch at the one-yard line. So now the Dragons knock on the door. They've been here before, Gary. they got to punch it in this time. Yeah, officially at the two-yard line. This is Ben Cooper area here. you got to give him the ball and let him get in the end zone. Big Ben. Not going to get though. No cup. It's going to be Gibson in for the touchdown. Dragons. Nice play, nicely executed. Um, fake the handoff to Cooper, give it to Gibson coming around the left end, Gary, into the end zone for the touchdown. So uh, York, Gary, with their first lead, and this is, I think, maybe the since back uh, uh, the last game we won, that York's had Grindy the lead in the County. second and had the lead in the second half. Well, you know, it's the first time they've had the lead since the Grundy County game. So you know, it's been a while. Let's. Hopefully they can keep it. And the extra point is blocked. So uh, they blocked the extra point. And with 2.04 left to go in the third now, it is the uh, Dragons on top, 13-7. to seven. Quality workmanship and exceptional customer service have defined southeastern drywall and construction of Jamestown. From custom-built homes, residential construction, remodeling to commercial construction, southeastern drywall and construction is dedicated to providing the best quality at reasonable prices. We're also looking for good carpenters. Call southeastern drywall and construction at 931-267-5435. A proud supporter of sports and education in our area. So uh, York gets a great big break, Gary, and they capitalize on it, but they can't get the extra point. We'll see if that comes back to haunt them. Yeah, you know, a big play there, you know, a couple of big plays. Um, the first one is the pass to Stover to get down to the two and then Gibson to get in the end zone, and um, York takes the lead. And I'm interested to see how White County will play from playing from behind now. You know, they're down uh, getting kind of late here, two minutes ago in the third quarter. So um, we'll see what uh, – uh, York, what they can do, York's playing pretty good defensively, Gary. What I what I was told was they did come from behind to beat Walker Valley, so we'll see uh, 
if they can do that here. And now that's going to be a short bunt, taking it about the 25. And uh, over the left side, number four still on his feet, gets up uh, to about, looks like the 36-yard line where the Warriors will have it first and 10 at uh, their own 36. That was D.J. Paul on the return out to about the, they're going to mark it 37-yard line, it looks like. Uh, that guy Toman in there again, you know, to help make that tackle amongst uh, a couple of others. I think Eli Kirby over there, maybe one or two others. Uh, good job by York on the short kickoff to um, hold them, you know, decent field position. So now it's going to be first and 10 for the Warriors at Two minutes and four seconds to go here in the third quarter. It's 13-7, York on top. New quarterback, Gary. It's uh, Noah Hamilton in the game. So Hamilton at quarterback now. Hamilton takes the snap, hands it off right up the middle to Griggs, and that went nowhere, Gary. Actually, that was Jaden Richard. Richmond. Richmond, Richmond. Richmond on the carry. Richmond on the carry, and he may he no gain, so it'll be second and ten. So we'll see now what happens with the new quarterback. As, we, as you heard, it's uh, Hamilton in at quarterback. Not sure about Leftwich, Gary. He didn't seem to be having a bad ball game. I'm not sure why he's pulled. but They may look at running the football here, a little more of a running attack. We'll see. Uh, he comes out gunning. He's got a good arm. He's uh, going to hit the receiver, and that's going to get him up to about the 45. Yeah, that pass completed to actually uh, Will Cheek. Uh, out there, gain of about eight. So, oh, no, they mark him way back. Yeah, right? they mark, him, mark him back where we're out of bounds. <laughs> so, it's going to be um, third down and about four here, it looks like. These officials don't give no forward progress, that's for sure. As back in the shotgun goes Hamilton. Noah Hamilton takes the snap. He's going to hand off over number five. And he's going to be wrapped up in the backfield. Great pl job by the Dragons D as they stack up number five. Jalen Richmond got dropped like a bad habit. Yeah, there was two or three there. Johan West, um, number 36, Connor Wharton. We hadn't called his name tonight, a freshman. And uh, it, it was also Evan Tompkins there as well. So a good play by those guys. Fourth and nine now for the Warriors. And back to punt is Will Cheek. Now, Cheek has had a real tough time punting the uh, football. If I'm York, I'm going to pull my guys up a little bit. I wouldn't give them a whole lot of yardage as he's not hit it, but one big one all night. And this one's uh, not a big one again. That's going to drop right at the 40-yard line, but take a White County bounce to the uh, 32, Gary. Uh, I'm just going to say uh, as high as that is, uh, York's got to get somebody up and under it. Yeah, fair catch up ball, do something, you know. Um, I don't know if they just don't have confidence in that or what, but they're playing the return guys deep. And, uh, you know, Cheek uh, got plenty of leg. He's just not having a good night back there. Leg, he's he's putting the ball well into the air. He's got some great hang time. The only problem is it's just hanging uh, for about five or ten yards. <laughs> York with the ball again. Let's see what they can do this time. Last play of the uh, first quarter. We got 22.6 seconds. Probably the last play of the quarter, I'll say. As York comes up, they're going to roll out. Uh, it's going to be Durham on the keeper, and Durham's going to get wrestled down again, Gary. And Durham just having a tough time running the ball. That play was real slow developing, and a couple of these others have been kind of slow developing plays too. And, uh, you know, if you're a quarterback and you're going to run that, and, you know, those holes are going to fill quickly, Gary. You got you to gotta get that up into the line through the hole quickly. And the junior camera and the Stevens come through with that uh, WWE slam out there as he drops him back for a three-yard loss. That'll do it. We're headed to the final frame of this one. We got 12 minutes yet to decide who's going to win homecoming 2019. And we'll be back after telling you it's 13-7, your. When it comes to watching sports, oh. there's no telling what you'll hear. No, 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 no! But when you order Pizza Hut for the game, you know exactly what you'll hear. What the? Oh, that looks fantastic. Your favorite pizza. Ooh. Those awesome wings. What? Plus sides and desserts. Yeah. All waiting at PizzaHut.com. So order now, because no one out pizzas the hut. Huh. <laughs> What game? Product availability, prices, participation, delivery areas, and charges and minimum purchase required for delivery may vary. Delivery charges not a driver tip. 
Whether you're competing on the athletic field or working hard in the classroom, remember you have the support of First Volunteer Bank, the bank with personality. We're behind you 100% of the way. Good luck to all the area teams. Play tough and play fair. And remember, when it comes to helping you with your banking needs, we're First Volunteer Bank, the bank with personality. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. And now over. Three loss, a yard loss by Durham, and now the Dragons uh, need to get just move the football. Now we're into the final frame of this. When you got the lead, now you need to run some clock. Yeah, you do, Gary. And uh, you know, it's, like you said, saying 13 from the 30. As we begin the fourth quarter, you got to get positive yardage plays here. Durham going to roll out. Durham's going to throw it. He's got a man out there. There's Tolman. Oh, almost with the reception at the 50. And uh, the uh, York uh, coaches won a uh, flag on that one, Gary. They say uh, they thought that uh, Tolman was hit before the ball got there. Well, it was just him and number 11, Travis Parrish, a defensive back out there. And uh, Tolman, much bigger kid. And if he catches that, uh, uh, Parrish was falling down. And uh, that was going to be a touchdown, Gary. And... Uh, you know, it was a close play. Uh, you know, if you're White County, you probably think that's good defense. If you're York, you want the flag and uh, didn't get it, so it'll be third and 13 for York. Bang, bang play, and that's uh, one of the toughest ones to call if you're an official. As now Durham going to try to get out, batted down. Good play there by Stevens as Stevens bats it down. And Big Stevens, uh, number 84, Gary, he's a tall kid. He's a lot to throw over. Yeah, he's disrupted a couple of plays here, Gary. So he's uh, he's supposed to be a defensive back. He looks more like a defensive end. And uh, York here in fourth down, uh, I'm sure Castellan coming on to kick this one away. Gary, if you look at the stats, still the stats, not a big difference between the two teams. Good third quarter for York, though, Gary. They actually outgained um, White County uh, uh, 92 yards to 28 in that quarter. So a big quarter for York offensively. Back to return the ball, D.J. Paul, as uh, Castellon will get the snap and gets a great punt as he hangs this one up, and that one's going to hit. And it just takes a pretty much straight-up bounce, and York will down it right there. So White County, Gary's going to get the ball at York or their own 43-yard line, so they've got a uh, pretty good field position. They do, uh, 43-11-41 to go here, and, uh, you know, they're looking for a touchdown, and, uh, you know, York missed the extra point. So, um, York, I, I've been impressed. Defense played well in the second half here. They just need to try to keep it going. Um, be interested, to, you know, it looks like White County coming back with Hamilton as the quarterback. Yeah, Hamilton back there along with Richmond as uh... – we don't see we don't even see Griggs back there. So Griggs and uh, uh, Leftwich out now. As a snap, it's going to be uh, they'll fake the uh, the uh, pitch and then he gets leveled at the 42 yard line. I think next time uh, <laughs> it will be Hamilton will probably make that pitch, Gary. Even if he he sees Richmond ain't going to get a yardage after taking that shot. Yeah, Evan Tompkins held him up, and uh, Ben Cooper come and finished it. And uh, you know Ben hit him as hard as he could and uh, knocked him backwards. A big hit by Ben Cooper. Uh, loss of two here. And now we see Leftwich back in. Leftwich back in the game. Leftwich takes the snap. He's going to keep it himself, go right in the middle. Leftwich going to get us some good yards back. Gets up to the 46-yard line. And, Gary, he got some good yards. Now we got a penalty as one of the White County guys just pushed Ben Cooper. And that is – I'm just going to say that's stupid. That was a – you know, they had third and manageable here. You know, they had third and about six or seven and instead this is going to back them up 15 yards that was clearly on white county and uh, push cooper backwards right and almost into the referee who threw the flag and he's got it laying at the 45 yard line so that's going to move it all the way back to the 30 yard line and that is a dead ball foul so that will lose the uh, down as well yeah that was after the play so it's going to be third down here and uh, a long way to go for white county and that's one of those uh, uh, those plays I like to call an insurance man play because that's what turns coaches into insurance men. <laughs> that's going to move it all the way back to the 31-yard line, and that's going to make it uh, roughly um, uh, 
third and 22, Gary. So third and 22. Not a lot of plays for that one, as we'll see what uh, why County does here. As uh, it's going to be Leftwich still in the game. They, I'm surprised they had for a while that Gary they had been uh, using Hamilton, but now Leftwich back in the ball game. And actually, I think uh, your receiver here is a little bit uh, too far up, but uh, they're not going to call it. And now the, it's going to be the throwback as there's the quarterback getting the throwback play. And York needs to stop him. Don't even get the first down. And uh, they hold him up and stop him short of the first down by about seven yards. Yeah, nice play there. Actually, a good throwback. They had the blocking set up, Gary. Uh, they almost got the guy that threw the ball over here. I missed the number. Uh on who that was but um they he threw it back completed it back to leftwich who turned it up the field and it's going to be fourth and about seven here and they're going they're going to go for it gary not uh, knowing whether they're going to get the ball back with 10 13 left to go in the fourth quarter this is a big play here of course we saw leftwich do this earlier and punt the ball gary so uh, it's nothing uh, that he can't qu kick or quick kick this one and he's stepping back now like he's going to quick kick it and he does york almost got a paw on it that one's going to hit though and take a good york bounce as it's going to be down looks like at about the i um, can't see where they downed it at looks like about the 23 yeah maybe uh, the, about the 23 yard line looks that's like that's what 23 I'm... 24 yard line something like that um I'm not so sure that ball wouldn't deflect it too, Gary. Uh, you know, Evan Tompkins back there along with number 63, Zach Strong, and uh, both those guys around the um, around the kicker as he kicked that ball, or around the left, which as he kicked the ball away. 9:50 left to go here in the ball game. The uh, uh, the clock keeper on the uh, sideline for some reason is uh, having a little bit of trouble down there. I still say. Back in that first half, he didn't stop the clock on the first down until they got the uh, marker up to the spot. But I'm just griping now, folks. I, I like to gripe. I don't know if uh, anybody noticed well, that. We've not. done our share of complaining tonight. <laughs> I mean, we've, we've been hard on the officials. They've done a pretty good job all in all, though. And, uh, but more importantly, York got the ball here, and they need to salt this thing away with a methodical drive. Yeah, and some points, and that would pretty much uh, seal the deal. And now I hand it off this time to uh, – Gibson, Gibson going to pick up uh, maybe a couple. I don't know if he maybe has got one on that one. Yeah, they're going to give him maybe, well, well, well one yard. Be sitting down with nine from 24, but clock running. If you're York, I think that's what you want right now. You want this thing to move. York needs to get a couple first downs, though, Gary, so they don't have to punt from deep in their own territory. Yeah, you know, and um, York uh, – Season high in passes tonight, though they have uh, they've thrown the ball a lot, Gary, and uh, completed a few of them. And going back, to Durham. Durham's going to air this one out. He's got Stover over here. Stover oh, right through the hands of Stover. He had it, and Gary couldn't hang on. Yeah, that was going to be an over-the-shoulder catch, Gary. That ball coming in, and he had, he had the sideline as a defender too, and uh, just couldn't look it in. And um, you know that's a tough catch to make, and uh, kind of hit off his shoulder pad, you know, glanced off his shoulder pad through his hands. So um, it'll be third and nine, but a good play by Coach Ride. Good, dr drawn up a good play and chance to complete a big one. It wasn't the prettiest spiral, but it was on target, Gary. It was on target, and it was a good throw. It had air under it. It needed to be thrown in the air, and uh, uh, Durham done a good job putting it to a spot. Jonah going to take the snap. He's going to roll out now. He's looking across the middle. He's got a man there. Oh, Toman uh, just knocked down right before the uh, ball got to him. And, uh, Gary, that one was close. That was a, that should have been a penalty. And they, they, they should throw the flag on that one. Uh, he come and hit him early. And um, no flag go. And it'll be fourth and nine. And uh, York going to have to kick us away. But that clearly was contact before the ball got there. And, um, of course, it's not the NFL. We can't throw the replay flag out. No, no replays. Um, you know, we're going to have to get Kevin up there. He's going to have to give us a replay system. That's true. <laughs> yeah, so. Um, and now this punt's going to be a uh, short one. It's going to be taken right about uh, the 47-yard line, and they'll get it into uh, Dragon Territory about the 46, where it'll be first and 10 Warriors, Gary, and they've got good position again. Yeah, they do, and um, – 
you know, uh, 8.48 to go, and the Dragons going to take it over here at the uh, 47 yard, or the uh, Warriors going to take it over at the 47 yard line of York. Um, York played great on defense in this second half. Got to have one. You gotta have a couple more stands though, and the first one begins right now. And as we said, yeah, Wye County, no stranger to coming back. They want beat to Walker Valley, thirty-two twenty-nine last week. So they're a team that can come back. We'll see what they do here, as it looks like. And now they got left back in the ball game. Going to hand it off to Richmond up the middle. Richmond breaks a tackle. Still on his feet, fighting forward, gets all the way down to about the forty-yard line. That's some good hard running by Richmond. Yeah, it was. You know, uh, got a little bit of a seam to run through, Gary, and got into the line and then just bullied his way for about, you know, four or five more yards, make it second and four. So the Dragons now will uh, come up with a second and four. Or not the Dragons, but the Warriors, I should say, coming up with a second and four as Leftwich uh, Leftwich back in the shotgun. Going to get the snap. Looking, looking, he's going to quick out this one. That's going to be good for the first down as coming down with, I believe, was number seven. Tony Lewis on the catch. Lewis. Lewis with reception going to be first and ten for the Warriors. And Gary York uh, needs to stop here. You don't want to let them punch it in uh, and be in, uh, in a situation where you're going to have to really brush to get a score to try to come back and win this one. Yeah, you know, you got to – York needs a stand right here. You got to bow up. And Richmond again, Richmond up the middle. He's going to get us some big yardage on first down. Richmond running hard, Gary. Yeah, he is. And uh, York trying to rotate linemen in and out, in and out, trying to trying to keep kids fresh. And um, right now, you know, um, getting late in the game, getting a little tired. But York uh, need York to bow up right here and make a stop. And Richmond running hard right now, but Richmond has had some rest. Richmond hasn't played for a while. Now he's back in. He's going to make a cut. Gets up inside the 20 to about the 16-yard line, and the Warriors are in there. But I see a rag on the far side of the field, and that's going to be a hole. Yeah. And I bet it's on number 54 because the coach is letting him have it over there. <laughs> yeah, they've got Dustin Guy, number 54 here. And um, actually, chop they, block. yeah, they're getting him for the 15-yarder. It's the chop block, so that'll – That'll move it back and uh, break for York. Uh, this is a break they need it, Gary. Huge break there for York because they had the first down. They were going to be in the red zone, and now they're going to be pushed back. Uh, let's see if more of that happened. Gary, that's going to be, what, about the 43? Actually, 40, about the 41-yard line. Uh, the penalty happened at the 26. So um, they're at 42-yard line officially, so – Instead of first and 10 on the 16, they've got it second and a long way from the 42. So uh, Looks like about 18. Yeah, second and 18. And, um, you know, there's another play, big field changing play for them. That one loses them 26 yards. So now the Dragons, uh, with a big break here, need to get some pressure on Leftwich. Leftwich has got Richmond beside him. Richmond run, run hard this second half. They're going to fake him. They're going to throw it out quickly to number eight over on the right side. He gets it back up uh, to about the original line of scrimmage. And that well, one. Hunter Pope, the tight end on the right side. Uh, they've been usually lining him up in the backfield and using him as a blocker, but kind of flanked him out there, kind of in the slot, throwing the ball, and he gets about 10 yards out of that, Gary. And that makes it third and nine, or third and eight, Gary. And that, uh, more importantly, it's four down territory. That gives uh, the the Warriors a chance to get some yardage here, and then maybe not have such a long fourth down. Yeah, a couple of big plays here for the York defense. Back in the shotgun goes Leftwich. York needs to get some pressure on Leftwich. They're going to fake now. He's going to quick out again, and that one's going to be good for about uh, five yards, and it's going to make it uh, fourth and short. Tony Lewis on the catch, so it'll be fourth and about three right here. Uh, big play in this game. Six. It's going to be under six minutes. Well, the clock stopped for some reason. 6.09 to play. And they got a player down, I think, on the far side. We've okay. got an injury over there on the far side. We've got a warrior down. And while we've got a break in the action, let us tell you, with 6.09 to play, it's 13.7. York will be back in just a moment. Pinterest Farmers Co-op, happy to be a proud sponsor of York Dragon Football. 
We wish you a winning season. Every game is a success when you have played your best. Fentress Farmers Co-op bringing you quality products from feed, seed and fertilize to automotive, to animal health and pet products to gas, diesel and propane to clothing and boots for the family and a gift shop. All this and much more at Fentress Farmers Co-op, 1219 Old Highway 127 South, Jamestown. Go Dragons! Well, Gary, uh, that one uh, was Lewis, I believe, injured on the play. Yeah, he hobbled off under his own power. Um, he's over there. It looks like he's walking it off, Gary, but it's fourth and four from the 29 here, and uh, this could be the game for White County. Big play for the Dragons here as Leftwich in the shotgun. York showing blitz. And here they come. They're going to take it off. It'll be Leftwich on the carry. Leftwich stopped. Great play by the Dragons there as hey, Evan in. Tompkins, number 14 on the stop. Grabbed a hold of him. Maybe pull him down short. And Evans hurt. Evans, uh, I think he may be cramped, but what a play by Evan Tompkins. Coming in with a big play on that one. Uh, folks, uh, just when York needed it, Evan comes up with it, and the Dragons uh, take the ball back on downs, and that is huge, Gary. It is. What a great play. I mean, he's just about a yard short, Gary, and, um, you know, York's going to take over at the 25 here, and a couple of first downs would really do a lot to um, help put this thing away right here. You know, York couple of plays make a couple of first downs and move the football yeah york needs to keep it a uh, couple of the first downs and like gary said you're going it's just about going to run the timeout you got 557 left to go you're going to split out uh, well actually it's going to be stover coming off the field as york's got a man in motion now they're going back to that uh, normal wing t format and they'll drive up to the 26 yard line and i didn't see who was on the carry on that gibson one, gibson on the carry you got a couple out to about the 27 it'll be second and eight zach comes uh, up with a, a few yards and now we see holdren coming back in the ball game also strong coming back in gary uh, york uh, this is uh the kind of play that york likes they like to be in the lead and they like to use that grind just to pound it at you football yeah, you know, the clock running, that's what you want right now. Keep that thing running. The clock is your best friend as long as it's running right at the moment. And now it is going to be Durham under center. Got a man in motion. Hands it off this time uh, to Castellano. No, that's going to be Gibson again on the carry, yet, was it? Yeah, it's Gibson. Gibson. And Gibson for about five more. So um, going to be about third and two, third and three here. Big third down oh, actually, for the Dragons going to be third and a little bit longer. I think it's going to be third and about five. They didn't give him as much. They no, they it. marked it to 31. So, um, going to be third and four, actually. Yeah. So, um, four yards on third down. A big third down for the Dragons here. Tolman coming back in the ball game. York needs a big play here. It'll be Durham under center. Got a man in motion. Fakes the handoff one way, hands up the middle, and that's uh, still on his feet, uh, but not going to get the first down, not by a long shot, as they're going to lose a yard or two on that one, Gary. And that one just uh, looked ill-fated from the word go. Yeah, that was, they, they were ready for that play, Gary. And uh, once again, that was one of those um, quick handoffs to Castellan going around the left end, and it looked like a jailbreak. They had everybody there. And, uh, and a penalty able. on York as well. Yeah, so, it was, you know, I didn't see what it was. Um, he, I think he got a block in the back. They're, already. they're probably going to decline this, I would think. Yeah, they're going to make it fourth down. Yeah, so fourth down and four, and uh, York will send the punt team on. York needs a great punt here and even better coverage. Yeah, you got to make sure you cover this thing. Uh, They've got um, Malachi Dow back to re return this. So um, Castellan got to get it away, get a good punt away. York goes three and out after uh, stopping White County, and now we're down to 4-14 left to go in the ball game. York on top, 13-7, to but they're about to give the ball back to the White County Warriors. Yeah, the clock stopped. They referees were having a conference, but they've got it wound now, and here we go. It'll be Castellon back to punt. 
Snap back low. P- snap. Good punt by Castle. That's going to hit one of those rollers. And it takes a big hop right to the uh, return guy. And he's back up all the way to the 48-yard line. Gary, that was uh, just a fortuitous bounce for the Warriors because had he not got that on the bounce, there's no telling how far that would have rolled. Yeah, that was the probably the worst punt of the night for Castellon. It was a good kick. It was a low-line drive, though. It took a big hop, and um, then you had Dow, who was able to run up under at full speed and returns it all the way out to the 47-yard line where the, they'll take over. And um, York, one more defensive stand, Gary. We'll see if they've got it here. Um, White County needing 53 yards in 3 minutes, 48 seconds. The Warriors come up with uh, Leftwich and in the backfield, Richmond. Leftwich got a man in motion. They're going to uh, fake it, and he's going he's gonna to air it out. Deep got a man wide open. Oh, no, York uh, on the broken coverage. Wide open, wheel cheek for the touchdown. What a big play, and uh... – I thought they were going to sack left, which Gary instead uh, did not, and he got that off, and cheat, uh, that was a blown coverage, nobody around him, and um, he's able to catch it and just walk into the end zone, 341 to go, a big extra point here now. Yeah, that, this comes back to the extra point York had blocked. We'll see what happens here as White County can take the lead with 341 to go on this kick. As number 16, Cheek, goes back to try to give his team the lead. He got the touchdown, going for the extra point. It's down. It's up. It is no good. He missed it. And we've got a tie ball game with 3.41 to play. It's 13 all. Back after this. At Metathrift Pharmacy, managing your medications has never been easier. We are the first pharmacy in the Upper Cumberland to offer strip packaging for your medications. Our MedPack strip packaging organizes your meds in easy-to-open pouches organized by date and time you take your meds. It's simple, convenient, and certain. Let us take the worry out of your medications today. For more information, call 879-8133 or we invite you to come by and see our strip packaging machine today. Well, Gary, uh, York gets another break, and uh, the Dragons are uh, going to get the ball with 341 left to play in a tie ball game. How big is this? Now, we've seen White County try the onside kick had it not been uh, for the Dragons uh, up man uh, just falling on it earlier. That could have been a big play. Bailey Hahn just dropped on one earlier. You think they go for the onside kick here? Not a chance. They're kicking this deep. They, they believe in their defense, too. They're going to try to play some field position here, make York punt that thing from deep. So this this kick's going deep, and they'll they'll try to, um, you know, cover this kick. So it will be back to kick it away, Cheek. Cheek uh, trying to kick this one away, and York trying to uh, come back, and they kick this one. He pounds that one, and it's taken – by Stover at the one. Stover back up to the 10, up to the 20. Stover still at it. Stover breaks free. He's got one man to beat. He's got the uh, the uh, kicker, and he's going to bring him down the 43-yard line. What a play by the freshman uh, as he gets a big return, Gary, and that's why they've been kicking away from him all night long. What a great return. It looked like he stopped two or three times, and uh, they got a guy down over here, Gary. But um, it looked like he stopped two or three times, and uh, he just broke free, and then he broke clear, and nobody around him. And this is great. You know, York set up here, and uh, 327 to go. You just you got to run your offense. You got to get positive yards, and you got to make the blocking's got to be there. You're want, you know, you don't want to leave this in Johan West hands. I mean, not that you wouldn't be willing to do that. You want to score this thing. Okay, we got a timeout on the field as we got an injured player for White County. They're helping him off, but I believe they're making maybe going to make White County take a timeout, Gary. Actually, I think they're calling a timeout, an injury timeout. So, um, not real sure. You know, the referee's in their huddle over there. He's got the water bottle out. We'll keep this uh, here, Gary. At this point, though, you look at this. The big play here may have been Cheek able to bring Stover down. Had he not, this uh, game might have been over. 
it may have been, you know, I, that was all that was saving the touchdown and Cheek able to get him down at the 43-yard line. So um, it'll be York from the 43. And, uh, you know, Coach Ride, he, he's he got a couple of things still in the playbook. So I'm sure we're going to see them right here and we'll see what happens. Uh, you know, uh, what a great return, though. York couldn't ask to be set up better. And that's by the freshman, Caden Stover. As up will come the Dragons. 3.27 in a tie ball game. They'll give to Gibson left side, and Gibson gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it, Gary. Yeah, you know, they're they're sitting on that play defensively, Gary. So, uh, you know, Coach Wright got to come out with something a little bit different here, and uh, uh, Isaiah Strong going to bring the play in. Uh, Thoman coming out, uh, that – you know, that generally would tell you this might not be a pass from our perspective, but, you know, we'll see what happens here. You know, you got Stover out there in the slot, though. Stover comes out along with uh, Strong here on the right side. Got a man in motion. They're going to hand it to Castellon, and Castellon's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage, Gary, and York's going backwards at this point. Yeah, that you know, there just ain't no running in there, Gary. You know, they're, they're sending more than York can block at this point, and... Uh, uh, this is a big third down, a big third down play. 2.35 left to go here in the fourth quarter. We're in regulation, all tied at 13 apiece. Ain't nothing settled in this one as Toman now comes back in. He and Stover will come over here to the right side. I've noticed they've made a change at cornerback here. It's not Dow anymore. It's Leftwich out here on Toman. And Stover going to get this one. Oh, and uh, Stover had it, and Stover had some running room ahead of him, Gary, and he just looked run before he looked catch. Yeah, he did, and uh, a big play. And um, so it'll be fourth and 11 from the 44-yard line, and uh, um, see what York, York's going to line up in pump formation, I believe, here. I think York's going to punt it away and uh, try to play field position. we got 2.05 left to go. Yeah, the clock stopped. Another big thing here as well, Gary. So, um, you know, 2.05 left to play, and uh, Jonah Durham's come back in the game. So, York may be going right here. So, York looks like they are going to be going for it. And now they're going to have to send uh, Strong over the other side. We're going to have to get timeout. York's going to get timeout before the play as – They just get the timeout call before the penalty. So timeout on the field. We're tied at 13 apiece with 2.05 to play. Like a great sports team needs a great captain to lead them, a county needs a great executive to move it forward. And Fentress County has it in Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy believes in this county and its endless possibilities. So for great sports and a great county, be like County Executive Jimmy Johnson and back Fentress County all the way. So, Gary, uh, York had to take a quick timeout to prevent a penalty. Uh, it's fourth down and 11 right now. They look like they were going for it. They were lined up and had a play called and couldn't get lined up right, Gary. And uh, uh, Coach Wright having to call the timeout. And uh, we'll see what happens here. It looks like Durham's still in the game, though. So, here here we go. Uh, you know, this, this is a huge play. You're going to give... If you don't convert this, you give uh, White County the ball at the 45-yard line with two minutes to go. And it looks like uh, we got another timeout called by York. So York's going to take another timeout. So timeout with 2.05 to go. It's 13-13 when we come back. Crisp air, cool breeze, fall leaves. All the things autumn brings. It also brings Carrier's fall cool cash rebate promotion. Now until December 15th, take advantage of discounts on select energy-efficient heating and air conditioning units. With financing options to fit any budget, you'll be ready to jump into fall and tackle any weather that comes your way. Carrier, turn to the experts. Call Conditioned Heating and Cooling for your free estimate today. Conditioned Heating and Cooling. Well, Gary... Uh... Fourth and eleven. You're at your own, uh, or at the other team's uh, 44 yard line. You hear? Do you risk this here, or do you punt it away? Well, you know, uh, you, there's 
obviously two schools of thought. You can punt this thing, try to pin them deep and play defense, but you just saw what happened to you. Um, you know, I think this is Coach Wright. He's saying we're going to go with our offense here, try to get a first down and win this thing. York looking for the win. Uh, they will uh, come up with uh, Durham in the shotgun. The snaps the uh, bobble by Durham. He's rolling out. He's throwing it out, and it's going to be low and incomplete, and now the Warriors are going to take over at their own 44-yard line, Gary, and they don't have to go far to get in range for Mr. G. No, his last couple of kicks have not looked real good, Gary, but um, he does have plenty of leg, and uh, York uh, got to come up with one more defensive stand here with 2.01 to go. And you can't let a play happen like you did the last time where you, you know there's some motion or some misdirection in the backfield that allows the receiver to just run free. Yeah, last uh, cheek was wide open. He nobody's even within a twenty-yard radius of him as he was e- able to just tiptoe in. And so now it's going to be in the shotgun left, which left, which tie ball game, thirteen, thirteen, under two minutes to play. Left, which going to air it out. He's got a man out there that was going to go incomplete, and left, which got dumped that time by the Dragons, Gary. They haven't hit him much tonight, Gary. York has been unable to get the rush on and um, put pressure on him, but uh, did hit him that time. Uh, that ball well short of the receiver. Um, Thoman had good coverage on it, though. And that was Connor Warden coming in, the freshman, laying the wood to uh, the quarterback, Leftwich. Leftwich coming up. He's got Cheek over here to the left, uh, two to the right. He's got uh, Richmond in the backfield. Now they're going to spread Richmond over to the left side. As York trying to get some pressure on Leftwich. The snap, they're going to fake the handoff in. Leftwich going to keep it. Leftwich got some running room. He leaps a player still on his feet all the way down to the 33-yard line. A big run by Leftwich. Yeah, nice play. And, uh, you know, he saw the gap and took off uh, running and – York, uh, nobody there, and by the time they caught up with him, he's 20 yards down the field. And Gary, he leaped one player from York and uh, was able to get even more yardage. So now the Warriors on the march. Your Dragons need a play here. As Leftwich comes up, we got a buck 35 left to go in the ball game, or at least in regulation. High snap. They'll hand it off. Uh, no, it's going to be Leftwich again on the keeper. Leftwich brought down this time at about the 31 yard line. Clocks are running, Gary. That's what you want right now. You want that clock to run and uh, play for overtime at this point. Yeah, you're, you you got to try and make a stand. Uh, gain about two. It'll be second and eight. And um, York got to make a couple more plays right here. And the Warriors taking an awful lot of time to make this play. As they take a lot of time off. Like we're down under a minute now. As Leftwich looks, he's going to throw it out. Got a man out there. Big number 40's got the play, and he's going to be brought down in the field to play. And they don't think he got enough for the first down, Gary, so the clock's going to keep running. And the Warriors will have to see if they take a timeout here. It's going to be third down and about one. Third and one from about the 25-yard line, and the clock running under approaching 30 seconds, Gary. And now Leftwich back in the shotgun takes the snap. Hands off to Richmond. Richmond gets through the first line. He's got the first down and a little bit more. He's going to get back to the 18-yard line with 23 seconds. And, Gary, it looks like they may be setting up uh, to see if they can get a cheek, a field goal here. Yeah, this is about a 35-yarder as we speak right now, Gary. Um, I'm not sure if that was their first time out or second, but they I know they have at least one here, so they can use the whole field. So timeout on the field with 23 seconds left to go. It's 13-13. Don't go anywhere. The Gary Maxwell Insurance Office offering area insurance is located at 300 West Central Avenue in Jamestown. Get a free quote for your home, auto, life, or business with no obligation to buy. Call 879-1251. Shane Beatty, Katie Cooper, Tammy Robbins, and Brad Rains agents, along with Jeff Robbins' manager, will be happy to assist you. That's Gary Maxwell Insurance, located 300 West Central Avenue, with locations in Livingston, Cookville, and Gainesboro. 
23 seconds left to go in regulation, Gary, and uh, the Warriors have a first and 10. They've got at least one more timeout. They've got time to run a couple more plays and if not score, get in close for the field goal. Yeah, they do, and, you know, York's job right now is to get them stopped, make them kick that field goal. Snap back to left, which he's looking for the corner. He's throwing. He's got a route out there. Incomplete. Good job by the Dragons as coming up and making the hit was Hawks as the ball got to the receiver. That receiver had the ball, Gary. Hawks just knocked it out away from him. Yeah, he did. That was D.J. Paul, the receiver, and uh, he had that ball in his hands, and uh, Hawks able to knock it free. 18.8 um, seconds to go here. Uh, it's, you know, White County second and 10. Uh, they they went for it, Gary. They they were trying to get the six points. So we'll see what they do here, and Gary, uh, at this point, if you're why can't you try to get to the side of the field that your kicker likes? Well, I think you know they if they may take another shot for the end zone, Gary. You know we'll just have to see here. They're going to take it. It's going to be Leftwich on the carry, and Leftwich trying to bounce outside. He's going to be hit. Going to be hit again. Going to be brought down short of the goal line. He's going to be close to another first down, though. And uh, Gary, it's 12.5 seconds, and the Warriors are knocking on the door. Yeah, they are. This is going to be first and gold, and um, yeah, they're trying to get lined up quickly. That clock should be running if it's like the first half. And they're going to uh, spike it here with 10 seconds left to go. Oh, it's going to get good here, Gary. <laughs> York, York was running kids on the field, and there's a flag down. So I'm York probably going to pick up a penalty here. No, York takes a timeout. Uh, so they did get the timeout. So timeout on the field. We've got 10 seconds to play. We're tied at 13 apiece. These two musicians play the same instrument. One is a rock. The other is more romantic. They may sound nothing alike, but they're in total harmony when it comes to breakfast at McDonald's. Whether you play hot licks or can't play a lick, Together, we breakfast. Choose a new Buttermilk Crispy Chicken McGriddles, Buttermilk Crispy Chicken Biscuit, or Bacon, Egg, and Cheese Biscuit and get any two for $4, only at McDonald's. Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Single item at regular price. Uh, take a look at what scenario we have here. We've got 10 seconds left to go. Do you kick now or do you uh, take another play? Well, they've got a timeout, Gary, so I'm sure they're going, they're trying to score a touchdown. They, you know, and that's the smart play. You try to keep it out of the, you know, keep it out of your, off your kicker. You want to score the touchdown, and that's what they're trying to do, and uh, York got to stop them here. It's going to be first and goal from about, looks like about the five-yard line. That's what it looks like. It's first and goal from the five, um, York uh, calling the timeout. That was their last timeout. And, um, you know, White County with a timeout. I'm sure they're going to try to get this thing in the end zone here. The Warriors going to come up now with, uh, they're going to say 11 seconds left on the clock. They're going to give them back uh, 11 seconds, or make it 11 seconds. And we see the kind of a jumbo package, it looks like, for the Warriors. Well, the tight end's in the backfield, and, uh, I would watch him slipping out here, and the referee's actually over-talking to Coach Derwin Wright. I think they're going to maybe even put some more time back on the clock, Gary, because York called the timeout to keep from getting the penalty. Maybe they may put about 12 and a half minutes or 12 and a half seconds on the clock. Yeah, they're um, oh, they're saying 13. So I yeah, they're they're giving them. You know, give them a total of three seconds here, so it'll be 13. I don't know. You know, they really. They may it may help them run another play. It may not. You know, they're going to get a couple of shots at this thing. So York uh, got to stiffen their necks here as they got to bow their backs and keep the Warriors out of the end zone. Here we go. Leftwich in the shotgun. Watch Leftwich Leftwich on the keeper. No, it's going to be Richmond bouncing outside. He's in for the touchdown. Touchdown Warriors with 8.7 seconds to go. They just ran it off the right side, Gary, off the tackle, and nobody there for York. And uh, he wa he gets it into the end zone. And at 8.7 seconds, pending the extra point, York going to be down six or seven. 
So the Dragons, uh, Gary, uh, go back. And now that big play by Cheek, that stop on Stover on that kickoff return. Yeah. Kept him from scoring, maybe. That and the inability to move the ball once you had great field position. You know, you, there's several things. And the kick is up. The kick is good with 8.7 seconds to go. The Warriors take a 20-13 lead. Lefty's going to keep it. It's going to be. He gets away from one tackle. Lefty's still running. Cuts back up. Lefty's still on his feet. Lefty's still on his feet. He's down the sideline. He's headed for pay dirt. Touchdown! Dragons. Hello, everyone. This is John Robbins on behalf of State Representative John Mark Wendell wishing the York Dragons many touchdowns and many wins during the football season. John Mark is happy to be a sponsor of the play-by-play -play broadcast and hopes that you enjoy each and every game. Again, on behalf of Representative John Mark Wendell, this is John Robbins saying best of luck, Dragons. Well, Gary, now you go back uh, maybe... Uh... Second guess that fourth down call. You can't really you can you can ifs and uh, and ups all night, but uh, that uh, they had good field position. They just marched it down. They put it in the end zone. That's what they had to do. Yeah, that's what they did. And you know, a couple of big passing plays, and they move it down there, put themselves in position, score with 8.7 seconds to go, and um, uh, you guys see what York's going to do here, and uh, more importantly what Cheek will do on this kickoff because he's got a good enough leg. He can kick it. He kicked one to the goal line earlier. You just probably want to keep it away from Caden Stover if you're Cheek. And now the ball falls off the tee and the fans starting to file out over there. The York faithful uh, not happy at this point. No, no, but we've seen big plays in games, so um, York looking for one of those right now try to stay in this game and it will be to kick it away cheek and he's going to kick this one uh, towards stover in the corner stover's going to take it at the uh, three comes back up over yeah he is chopped down right there 6.6 .6 seconds to go and gary york going to need a miracle now yeah, D.J. Paul, the gunner on the right side, came down, made the tackle, Gary, and um, York deep in their own territory here. Um, one play here, so um, uh, Jonah Durham getting it from Coach Wright, and uh, we'll see what York comes out with here. And, Gary, once again, uh, York uh, seeing why County. We talked about it. Why County not the team of the past few years, uh, not the doormats they used to be. And they, this is the second week in a row they've come from behind to win if they hold on here. York does have one more play, though, with 6.6 .6 seconds. Uh, you got any trick plays of 90-yard plays that you <laughs> draw up, Gary? I don't know. Um, we'll see if they've got one here, you know, some kind of hook and ladder or something. you you got to complete the pass, though, Gary. That's the first and most important part of it. Durham, uh, now we're going to have a timeout called, I believe, by Wyatt County. 6.6 .6 seconds to go. York trails Y County 20 to 13. The Dragons on their own 15 yard line. At Hall Family Pharmacy, we are breaking the chain of large chain pharmacies. With our new local low cost prescription program, this hometown pharmacy is meeting and beating chain pharmacy prices. We are excited to offer a full list of generic prescriptions starting as low as $3. To see if your prescription is offered at these new low costs, check the list on our website, hallfamilypharmacy.com, or give us a call today at either Hall Family Pharmacy location. Hall Family Pharmacy, breaking the chain of national chain pharmacies. Well, Gary, uh, York with one play, and uh, it's uh, another tough one for the Dragons. If they can't come up with some kind of miracle here, it's going to be another tough loss for them. It is, you know, and this one going to be particularly tough um, considering you had a chance, couldn't do anything with it, and then uh, White County gets their chance and does something with it. So, um, you know, York, uh, 86 yards here, one play to get it. So we'll see what the Dragons do here. Here comes Jonah Durham in the shotgun. He'll take the snap. Durham's going to drop back. He's going to throw this one out for Toman. That one's going to be picked off by number 10, and is he going to run it? He's going to run it in the end zone, and that's going to be a touchdown for the Warriors, and that's going to add insult to injury right there as uh, that one's going to be taken in for a touchdown 
and now it's uh, 26 to uh, 13 uh, Warriors and uh, that's going to be the last play I don't think they're going to kick the extra point as uh, no they're not they're going out to shake hands so 26 to 20 that's your final or 26 13 I should say that's your final here York drops one to a wide county don't go away we'll be back in a few minutes with the progressive post game show Mark your calendars. You are invited to the Twin Lakes Annual Meeting of Members on October 5th. Join us at the Jackson County Middle School as we recap the past year and prepare for the next. Registration runs from noon to 2 p.m. And don't forget to bring your ID. There will be great door prizes and gifts. You will not want to miss this event. Visit one of our seven local offices for more information. We hope to see you there. Quality workmanship and exceptional customer service have defined southeastern drywall and construction of Jamestown. From custom-built homes, residential construction, remodeling to commercial construction, southeastern drywall and construction is dedicated to providing the best quality at reasonable prices. We're also looking for good carpenters. Call southeastern drywall and construction at 931-267-5435. A proud supporter of sports and education in our area. When it comes to watching sports, oh. there's no telling what you'll hear. No, 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 no! But when you order Pizza Hut for the game, you know exactly what you'll hear. What the? Oh, that looks fantastic. Your favorite pizza. Ooh. Those awesome wings. What? Plus sides and desserts. Yeah. All waiting at PizzaHut.com. So order now, because no one out pizzas the hut. Huh. What game? Product availability, prices, participation, delivery areas, and charges and minimum purchase required for delivery may vary. Delivery charges not a driver tip. Managing your medications has never been easier. With Metathrift Pharmacy's MedPack, your medications come organized by date and time, securely sealed in individual easy open packages. So when it's time to take your next dose, you just tear the package off the roll and your pills are there. That's all there is to it. No bottles, no bother. For more information, call us at 879-8133. Whether you're competing on the athletic field or working hard in the classroom, remember you have the support of First Volunteer Bank, the bank with personality. We're behind you 100% of the way. Good luck to all the area teams. Play tough and play fair. And remember, when it comes to helping you with your banking needs, we're First Volunteer Bank, the bank with personality. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. And now over. And back here, York Institute, uh, where uh, York Dragons come up short tonight by a final of 26 to 13. And Gary, this more disappointing than my uh, my ACT scores when I was in high school. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, you you had your chances, and uh, you know, had momentum your way a couple of times. Really couldn't capitalize on it, and. Uh, you know, had a chance there at the end, couldn't move the ball, Gary, and, uh, you know, had turned it over on downs, and uh, White County gets it at 56 yards to go, and they, they get it and uh, get the touchdown, then added one late on the interception return for a touchdown there. But, um, you know, I, I like the fight that York had tonight. They fought. They fought hard defensively. I, uh, you know, once again, this death is an issue, and they um, – you know, it, it, it showed at the end of the game as uh, White County is able to move the ball down the field. And, um, you know, it, it um, ends in a really – it's a tough loss. It's a disappointment. And it's it's a matter of, uh, too, also of uh, failure to, to uh, make a big plays when you need it. York uh, had the opportunity to get that real early lead and just kind of uh, take command of the game early in the ball game on that very first series – when Wye County fumbled, York had it, got down the one, couldn't get it in. That really kind of uh, built up the Warriors, especially their defensive unit. Yeah, it did. You know, that was a big stand for them. And um, York uh, has at times moved the ball well till they get down close to the red zone and uh, just uh, have a real tough time doing anything with it. And, um, you know, once again, we've seen that a couple of times tonight, Gary. They just uh, – was moving the ball guy down there close, just couldn't move it any further. And um, no no bigger than this last drive they had. It took over at the 43-yard line and ran three plays, lost two yards. And, um, 
you know, uh, had to go for it on fourth down, couldn't do anything with it. And, um, you know, that that was tough to allow White County to take it over out there. And, of course, uh, that one, uh, you had to play in that one. Uh, Stover, who made the big return on the kickoff, dropped a pass that Gary might have been a first down in that one. He was coming up the sideline, hit uh, Ryan Chesson, and he was looking run before he looked catch and dropped it. And that that kind of broke a little momentum there for York in that uh, in that series. Yeah, it probably did somewhat. You know, um, York threw the ball 19 times tonight. That's um, by far the most they've thrown in the game this year. And, um, you know, that, it's their way of trying to move the ball, you know. It, um, you got to balance this out. Everybody's stacking the box, put more in there than you can block, and it makes it tough, you know, try to run the football. And welcome down to the Progressive Post Game Show. We're going to take a quick timeout. We see Coach Derwin Wright making his way up here. We'll be back to talk with him right after this. Cheer this year for all our school teams and activities. Get behind our local schools. Join the Parent Teachers Group and help improve the quality of education. Sponsor school activities. Go to a ball game. Hear a concert. Reach higher. Progressive Savings Bank, insured by FDIC. Everything we do, it's true. We do for you. And back here with Coach Derwin Wright. And, Coach, uh, this one a heartbreaker here tonight for homecoming. Let me tell you something. I, I'm, you know, there's times when you, uh, you, uh, you may lose a game, but you uh, accomplish a lot. These kids this week worked their butts off on a new offense, came out here and did, and did one heck of a job. And uh, I felt like we outplayed them all night long, just to be honest with you. And uh, we just had a couple bad breaks. We had a couple of drops. We had opportunity, really, the first play they ran. And uh, uh, Johan Thaddeus caused the fumble. Thaddeus scooped it, and uh, they tackled him about the four-yard line. And that's one we've got to punch in. And, uh, you know, they held us. And... Uh, you know, honestly, we should have went in, should have went in half with about 14 points, but we didn't. And you can't look in the rearview mirror; you got to look forward. And uh, you know, we did. Came out in third quarter, took the opening drive down the field, and scored. Uh, you know, got some momentum. But now their team, they've they've come back a couple times this year. And I told her guys, you know, they're going to keep fighting. But uh, you know, I think the biggest dumbest mistake tonight was uh, with about four and a half minutes. I should have punted the ball away. Uh, we we worked a comeback route for that situation. And, I felt like we had it, and uh, you know, but the, the smart thing to do there is punt it, and uh, hopefully they make they make a mistake or you know mishandle the, the snap. But you make at least make them go another 25 or 30 yards. Uh, but it's like I told her kids, you know, it's a it's a team effort. We all make mistakes, and uh, I just I just felt like we played our hearts out tonight, and uh, kids played hard, and uh, that's all you can ask for as a coach, and and they improved, and. Uh, I'm proud of our ball team with with the injuries we've had and the things going on. They, uh, I mean, you take it in a week what they did to accomplish right here. You guys have never seen me in those splits with that shotgun formation, and uh, you know I'm trying to get athletes in space. And I felt like we had a couple opportunities early, but uh, you know, uh, Caden Stover, he's a freshman. He dropped a couple a couple good balls from Jonah, but then he made a couple of tremendous catches. Same with Thaddeus. Uh, you know, Tom and uh, but uh, I'm just proud of our club. We're gonna we're we're, we're gonna keep working. And, uh, you know, disappointing, but uh, they don't have anything to hang their heads about tonight. Coach, uh, you were one move by Caden Stover if getting around cheek there at the very on that kickoff. He was one move away from uh, you guys having the lead at that point. Yes, he was. You know, you had that one. You had uh, a wheel route that we had that uh, was was just right there. Uh, you know, and again, going back to that first and first down on the four yard line, and uh, you know that that's an area that uh, you know it, it's it's a thorn. So we we've got to punch that one in, and we made a you know we're following our guard, and we made a misread. The guard kicked out, and we popped out instead of turning up. But uh, you know the efforts are the effort is there, and uh, I'm just proud of our guys tonight. I, you know, I hate that that we've lost homecoming, but uh, you know I, they they played their hearts out tonight, Gary. Coach, uh, your defense, your defense had some big plays. A uh, few uh, breakdowns tonight, but for the most part, the defense played pretty well. That last score, of course, uh, really not. Uh, well, that 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 again, you know, punt it. We give them a lot of the long field, and uh, you know, I I know that. But sometimes I'm a riverboat gambler, and uh, I roll the dice, and uh, 
you know, I've done it in the past and it's worked out, and I've done it in the past sometimes when it don't. And, uh, you know, I knew our defense was playing really good. Uh, but, uh, you know, hindsight, uh, again, I needed to punt that ball and uh, get, give them a long field because they had one heck of a good field goal kicker. We knew that. We saw that in warm up. But, uh, you know, ha- had to come back. Uh, this little short hopped it, but uh, it happens. But, again, you know, so close, so close. Uh, I, I've been disappointed in the effort that we played these other games. This game, if we'll play with that kind of effort every night, we're, we're, we're going to be all right. I, I, I really I really saw this team grow up and take some steps. Uh, I know they want it their homecoming, but, uh, again, I'm proud of them. I'm proud of them. I, I'm, I'm positive right now with them. You know, I, I've been down a little bit with uh, some things that we've done. I, I felt like – you know, the last two games we beat herself, and in this game, I don't think I don't think we beat herself. We did miss some opportunities, but that's part of football. But uh, you know, I felt good about what we did, and again, I say, you know, three days, four days, they, we put in a, we put in a whole new design of an offense, and uh, you know, they they were they were they were executing it pretty daggum good. Coach, you did have a couple of turnovers. Uh, that that pitch turnover uh, that was uh, that led to their first score was a tough one. Uh, yeah, that, that was this this you know, Jonah pitched for no reason, and uh, and and you know he knew that he he knew that you know he came around the corner and he's supposed to pitch off the outside linebacker and outside linebacker bit on uh, on the inside and uh, you know he he could have ran it for a long way but uh, you know I I guess from last the week before he come around that corner and he, he got you know got a good shot on him and uh, but uh, you know that's that, that's a turnover that we'd love to have back. Uh, Take that, and then take the score in the first first quarter. You know, get it and get the other turnover we got. And got great field position. Got in the red zone again. You know, two trips to red zone without points. And uh, you know, and typically I'd kick a field goal, but Johan he's still hurting. He you know his foot's hurting, and and he's not confident in his kick right now. So uh, you know, got to get him well. But uh, again, I just I, I felt like we outplayed him. We just uh, had a couple breakdowns. It was a good breakout night for Thaddeus Toman and also for Caden Stover. Caden had some big receptions tonight, but Thaddeus showed his athleticism tonight, especially on the the play where he tipped it to himself. Yeah, he he goes up. You know, you 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 spend a lot of times. You got a receiver. You spend a lot of time go high point to football. Uh, Thaddeus, we've never had to tell him man. He he just naturally goes after it, and uh, so he he's a target uh, for Jonah and. Uh, you know, I'm proud of Jonah, uh, you know, what he did tonight. And, uh, you know, I, I, our backs are still hesitating. We've got to hit holes. We've got to hit them faster. But, uh, you know, overall, uh, again, I, I just, I, I'm not disappointed in this ball club. I'm disappointed in the loss. I'm disappointed for them in the loss because they played their hearts out. And, uh, you know, you take two mistakes and two plays, we win 14 instead of losing that way, you know. And in the end right there, uh, there's no time on the clock. What are you going? You got to take a shot. You know, it ain't, ain't going to do you no good to run the ball. Take a shot. And it's like I told them, hey, we're going to take a shot right here and throw it. Throw it out there. Uh, you know, they're backing up and prevent smart. But you know, you, you got to take a shot. The kid intercepted it. But to me, that score, you know, it'll go up, it'll go in the book. But you got to take a shot. You know, you can't win without trying to throw it and get it there. So, but uh, again, I just I'm hurting for our kids. Uh, parents community pick them up because they played their hearts out tonight coach you got one of the hottest teams in the state coming in next week you got the upperman bees they're as good as advertised uh you know they do they do what they do well and uh they execute really well they've got they've got speed on the outside the quarterback and tailback are good runners uh but uh you know we we uh we i I feel like we made strides and we just got to do the same thing next week and be be smoother in what we're doing and uh uh you know uh, my wife tell you i I spent all saturday and sunday night up and and coming up you know with it we used to run a version of this when i was at clarksville academy many years ago in uh 90 94 i guess 94 95 and uh i started looking and and you know trying to trying to figure out how we could get Thaddeus out there, how we could get Stover on the field, how we could go from a three running back offense to a two running back offense, get our quarterback some depth back there. So we went with this shotgun wing tee and, uh, 
you know, I feel like maybe if we'd been doing that all year, that this this game would have turned out different. But uh, you know, in coaching, sometimes you got to take the knocks and the bumps, and 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 you lose uh, a couple people, and you realize, hey, I can't do what I feel like I want to do. What can I do to highlight my athletes and do the best job? And uh, our coaching staff and kids did a great job getting that in this week. And uh, you know, I know they're heartbroken, but. Uh, I'm proud of them. I'm proud. Of, I'm proud of the effort, and I'm proud of what they did in in these four days. And uh, you know, I just I, I want to keep their head up, not give up, because uh, you know if they keep doing what they're doing, there's some wins in the future. Coach, how far away from getting Miller back? Uh, I don't know. You know, uh, he had a high ankle sprain. Uh, I, I've never seen a kid with a high ankle sprain needing to be on a scooter, but he he was in that much pain that he needed a scooter, and uh, so. You know, I, we don't know. Uh, he's he's going to therapy, and uh, you know it's just going to depend on uh, t- depend on you know the pain tolerance and uh, therapy and and what what those guys say. Uh, you know, I, I kind of thought we might have him back this week, but you know he's still he's still not he's still not you know you can tell when he's walking he's ginger on it. So you know we, we're hopeful the next week, but. Uh, I don't know. I don't know, but we got to we got to overcome it. And uh, you know, Ben Cooper hurt an ankle tonight, but uh, you know, we'll see. Uh, if I know Ben, he'll be he'll be back out there. He, he was begging to go in at the end, you know. But uh, you know, you got to protect your kids. And uh, but you know, hopefully we can get Miller back. Well, Coach, I'll let you go. Uh, I think we've uh, we bored your granddaughter sleep here. Yeah, we're, she's a <laughs> poppy's girl, but uh, I, I, you know, I, I, I'm I'm. I'm disappointed in myself a little bit tonight, but I, I tell our community, uh, our, our, your your your, uh, your team played their hearts out for you tonight, and uh, you know it's it's a heartbreaker. But uh, I, I'm proud of our ball club. Well, coach, we want to thank you for joining us. Tough loss here tonight. Best of luck as you head into uh, Upperman next week, or t- with well, Upperman here next week, I should say. Thank you, Gary. And that was Coach Derwin Ride. As we're going to take a quick time out, let Gary jump back in here. We'll take a look at some stats. So don't go away. We're on the Progressive Post Game Show. It's football time on the mountain. At Progressive Savings Bank, we know running your small business is a lot like coaching a team. You call the plays that drive your business towards success, and we're your number one fan. After all, you provide the products, the services, and jobs that keep our local economy moving forward. We partner with small businesses to help you reach your financial goals with free business checking and flexible financing to help operate and grow your business with the right financial equipment to keep you in the game. This is Mark Justice wishing our York Dragons a successful football season. We are proud once again to sponsor Dragon First Downs. Progressive Savings Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. back here where York comes up short in their home game by final of 26-13. Gary, take a look at some of the stats from tonight's game. Okay, Gary. Of course, you um, told the big stat um, for York, uh, only nine first downs on the night, and more importantly, only four rushing, five by the way of the air, and um, York, 39 rushing attempts for only 72 yards, Gary. You know, that's 1.8 yards the attempt. Six of 19 through the air, you know, and trying to think the last time they threw the ball 19 times in a game. But those went for 95 yards, uh, one touchdown, one interception there at the end of the game. Um, For White County, they had 13 first downs, seven rushing, six passing, um, 30 carries, 152 yards, 5.1 yards per carry. They were 16 of 26 through the air for 150 yards, one touchdown, one interception, and... um, Two touchdowns, one interception. I'm sorry. They outgained York tonight, 302 to 167. You look at, uh, you know, penalties wasn't really a factor in this game. Um, White County had five for 55. York only three for 22. You know, time possession pretty even. And it was an even game till we got right to the end there. And, Gary, like you said, uh, that last uh, touchdown was uh, just kind of a, a fluke ending. Yeah, you know, it's like Coach Wright said, you got to try to do something there. So, you know, it, those things end that way sometimes. 
looking at the individual stats, it was uh, York, Gresham, Nathaniel Castellon, 11 carries, 39 yards. Zach Gibson, 10 for 21. Ben Cooper, 9 for 17. And Jonah Durham, 9 for minus 5. Um, Durham through the air was 6 of 19 for 95 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Caden Stover caught three for 64 yards. Thaddeus Toman, uh, two for 64 in a touchdown. And then Sawyer Gunner, one for minus three. For White County rushing, it was Cedric Leftridge, eight carries, 69 yards. Jaden Richmond, 10 carries, 37 yards. Will Griggs, seven for 30. Malachi Dow, four for 18. And Noah Hamilton, one for minus two. Through the air, it was left with 14 of 24 for 128 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. Malachi Dow, one of one, of one for 16 yards. And Noah Hamilton, one of one for six yards. The receiving, it was Nathan McAllister, four for 27 and a touchdown. Cade Clark, four for 22. Will Cheek, two for 58. And of course, the big touchdown. Tony Lewis, two for 12. Cedric Leftwich, one for 16. Hunter Hope, one for nine. DJ Paul, one for five. And Will Griggs, one catch, one yard. Uh, for York, uh, defensively, it was Isaiah Strong led team in tackles tonight with 10. Evan Tompkins, Thaddeus Stoneman, Ben Cooper with eight each. Um, to cap the scoring, if you... If, you go, go right ahead, Gary. As, uh... Okay. Well, to start with, uh, your White County kicked off the score in the second quarter, 7.31 to go. It was Nathan McAllister, a 10-yard pass from Cedric Leftwich. Will Cheek with the kick, uh, three plays, 12 yards, a minute, 31 seconds. It was 7 to nothing, White County. In the third quarter, 4.49 to go. York gets on the board. It was Thaddeus Toman, 20-yard catch from Jonah Durham. Johan West with the kick. Eight plays, 80 yards, 348. It was 7-7. Seven to seven. Just a couple minutes later, 2.04 to go in the third quarter. It was Zach Gibson on a two-yard run. The kick was blocked. Three plays, 14 yards. Main 14. It was 13 to 13-7. 3.41 to go in the game, White County. Will Cheek, a 52-yard pass from Cedric Leftwich. The kick missed. One play, 52 yards, seven seconds. It was 13 all. And then with eight seconds to go, it was Jaden Richmond, a five-yard rim. Will Cheek with the kick. Eight plays, 56 yards, one minute, 53 seconds, 20 to 13. And then at the at the end of the game, Cedric Leftwich with the 30-yard interception return off the interception, and 26 to 13 was the final score. We're going to rush this because we've got to, to get our Hall's Family Pharmacy Player of the Game in, and Gary, uh, we'll have that right after this. Hello, this is Philip Hall with Hall Family Pharmacy and Hall Sports and Outdoors. We are proud to sponsor this broadcast player of the game. Be a part of the winning team. Hall's is proud to be this area's number one pharmacy. And now you may visit our expansion in downtown Jamestown for all things sports and outdoors and a complete line of sports medicine equipment. And back here, Gary, uh, give us our Halls Family Pharmacy Player of the Game. Well, we're going to go with Thaddeus Stoneman, two catches, 64 yards, including the uh, 44-yarder and the 20-yard touchdown. Um, had an interception return for 17 yards, caused a fumble, and had eight tackles on defense tonight, Gary. So Thaddeus Stoneman, our Player of the Game. Well, uh, that's going to wrap it up for us. We're going to get out of here real quick because we're about two minutes away from all the latest news, and we want to thank you for joining us. Thanks to Hall Family Pharmacy for our player of the game, Thaddeus Toman, our uh, player of the game for this game. And uh, don't forget, next week we've got Upperman here at York Institute. We'll have that one live for you here on the w on WDB, and also don't forget the Coach Derwin Wright Sports Show. Mondays at 530. That's going to wrap it up for us from here for 15104 Sports. I'm Gary Clark. See you. That's a game.